Good evening, everybody, and welcome to Decatur, Alabama, Ogle Stadium, home of the Decatur Red Raiders. I'm Nick Belovsky, alongside tonight with, of course, the venerable one, John Godwin. Hey, John. Hey. And the red-clad and (laughs) short-haired... We had to go on camera, it's gone. everybody. The the uh, Brent Collins got a haircut, so hey, there you go. Sadie Bushline gave us a, a picture last week. I'm going to show it, show it to you. Had me a bunch of hair on there, and it's gone. So I had my beard. I thought and you still got it somewhere. It might show up. At, <laughs> I heard it was going to show up at it Christmas. Might show up. It might show up as an ornament on a Christmas tree. But uh, <laughs> thank you again, Miss Sadie Bushline, for your. Art, artistic ability. Don't get excited about the video. We uh, we thought that it would be nice just to turn on the video so that you could people could tune in and see. Yes, that we were on. We are not going to be able to show the game. Though. Nick, you may need to kill the lights because I don't think they can see you. Oh, in the they halo. can see you. No, they don't need to see me <laughs> anyway. So, um, welcome to tonight's game. Second round playoff action for the Alabama High School Athletic Association football. You want to ride, read one of those PSAs yeah. while you're doing it? Well, I was just about to say that tonight's ball game is brought to us by, or do you want me to wait? No, keep on going. All right. Tonight's football game is brought to you by Whataburger. Whataburger, Whataburger. Don't let late night cravings get you down. Whataburger is open 24 hours, so stop by after the game. Whataburger, a proud sponsor of the Decatur Red Raiders. All right. So... You want me to go ahead and hit? Yeah, one give me, give me. Hey, a, I, let give me, me, let me tell you how much we missed you last week, though. Before we get into it, Nick, I know you were taking care of your wife and your daughter. I'm sure they're doing better. They are, yeah, good. And you, you did the cleaning today at the house, I so did. you got all kind of brownie points. As absolutely, as a, I hope so. as, a, as a father and a husband. So I'm glad to have you back, though. Well, thank you. Uh, I am too. <laughs> I am. Too. Although John did an exceptional job yeah. with John play by really play last job. week, so uh, I told my wife and daughter, especially my daughter, I said, "The broadcast is in an hour and a half. I want to be home. What do you want for supper? I'm good. I'm good. I'm good." Ten minutes till the broadcast time. I want a subway sandwich. Well, they have Uber and Uber Eats or uh, Grub well, South. Or she ordered one, and her <laughs> uncle uh, brought it to her. My wife's brother brought it, but the order was wrong. And so here I go. I'm listening to y'all on the radio, trying to pick y'all up. And I could hear y'all at first, and then all of a sudden, when I come out with the sandwich, to tried to find y'all. That's when y'all hit y'all's blackout, and I was yeah. like, "Oh my!" Hey, we're always better, just like in golf. That second putt, you know, every time our second feet comes up, we're always better. So. Somebody out there, y'all, I want to make sure uh, if if you've got one of our cell phone numbers, just to text us that uh, everything's coming in okay. Nick, you might need to move your mic up a little bit closer. Well, I keep trying to. There you go. That's it. That's it, get, it. Well, it gets stuck in my beard and my mustache. No, okay. Well, I'll turn you up a little bit then. Okay. How's that? All right, give me a PSA. All right, everybody. The Alabama High School Athletic Association asked us to read these PSAs for you tonight. In Alabama high school sports is a tradition, whether at home or on the road, make our schools, our communities, and our students proud by being a supportive fan. Help us by helping you follow the safety guidelines of the Alabama Public a Department of Public Health. We are counting on you to continue our high school traditions. That was pretty good. That was great. Fantastic. Hey, and by the way, um, John Sturgis says that we look good. Okay. Let's see. Pat Hillis says we're loud and clear, but oh. he's sitting right next to us. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, guys. He's got his earbuds in. I like it. I like it. Uh, pre-game sponsored. The pre-game tonight's game is brought to you by Ben Dahl's Pharmacy. Oh, well, Tim Douthat. He's a good one. I know. One. He's a good one. Ben Dahl's Pharmacy spe- and Shannon, might I add. Yes. Bendall's Pharmacy. Shannon first. <laughs> Bendall's Pharmacy specializes in serving our community with fast, friendly, and professional service. We take great pride in our exceptional cu- customer service experience. Come see us, 1316A Stratford Road, Southeast, Indicator, right. Alabama, 256 353 2021. Go Red Raiders. Well, all right. Uh, we come in tonight's game, second round of the playoffs. I mean, when's the last time we were in the second round of the playoff, guys? Uh, 2016. And we were playing who? Uh, Ramsey. Ramsey. Ramsey High School down in Birmingham. I think we were before that, right? When did we play Oxford? 
Uh, that was in 2000. I mean, we played uh, – uh, ja- not Jackson Olin. Yeah, Jackson Olin first and beat them. They were number one, mm-hmm. remember? And then we went to Oxford. But that was the last one, right? That's right. That was the last time. Yeah. That was got, the last time. Yeah, was we won. 18? We, or we got – Yeah, we won. We, we, we won't talk Olin, about but, that. Man, the Oxford game was ugly. Yeah. Yeah. That was actually the game, the Oxford game, that uh, – proud to be a Red Raider, you know. Um, that's when uh, – when, when our quarterback – Hurt well, he yeah, it was like a broken leg. It, it, it was, it was not good, and and it did. The results did not turn out the way we wanted it to. But after the game, it oxed for both teams to go out the same little, little gate. And uh, Decatur's um, Decatur waited for Oxford to go out and uh, gave him a, a, a clap for him. Yeah, really? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, no, I think the Oxford. I think the Oxford coach was like, "What?" <laughs> and, and Coach Ackhoff was like, "Okay." Yeah, well, yeah. Char- character, yeah. class, That's, and commitment. You got that right. I mean, you know? I don't think there's too many, too many teams that would have done that, but uh, Decatur did that, and hopefully we'll have a different uh, outlook tonight. But yes, coming into the second round of the playoffs, playing the Gardendale Rockets. Um, if you uh, if you don't know where Gardendale is, if you go to Birmingham on 65, you know the church that has the big cross out on front of it that's gardendale and we've learned the that part. their play-by-play and color their whole or- orchestration tonight is a lot of put, that came put from, on that, from church. that church that's so. right so uh if you're listening and you have a, a one of these big churches indicator that have a a lot of that <laughs> av stuff then you know they might want to <laughs> hang Come in there us. and look at it and, and help us out next year on friday night because we are going to need a cameraman as well right? well yeah we're Hudson, probably that's is going to be a, on the field yeah. somewhere but uh <laughs> but yeah uh but it's going to be a uh a nice night tonight and uh i'm and like brent said I, i'm super glad to have nick back tonight well i appreciate it I, it was it was a helpless feeling sitting there listening because i sure did uh, I sure did enjoy listening to you guys, but I was glad y'all brought home a victory. We got one more, at least one more to call tonight, maybe a few more after that. Well, you got to really give our guys a lot of credit. We played a really good game, and, and Fort Payne's a formidable opponent, um, but we didn't make mistakes. I mean, that was the biggest thing. We had uh, plus three on the take uh, t- uh, turnover margin. Um, I think uh, J- Jiren McDaniel probably played the game of his career and uh, Ryan Kirk, very steady on the running back. And, uh, you know, I mean, those are two of the strong uh, leaders in the senior class. And uh, we're, we're uh, needed, needed again tonight, but we guys. do. Yeah. Fort- fortunate to have 24. Is that right? 24 seniors on this, yeah. on this team. So, you know, they're playing for their football lives. I mean, they don't realize how close they're, the end they of are their, to be in the end. Yeah. 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 The yeah. end of their career could be, but, uh, I've talked to several of them this week, and they are going to play with a lot of confidence tonight. They're coming in here believing they can win, so that's half the battle. Well, why don't we – you got anything before we go let to me, Coach Adcock? Let me do this PSA for veterans. Okay. Say, okay. Hey, everybody, yeah. thank you to our veterans. Yes. 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 Uh, my father was in the Army, and I know that there's nothing more that my dad would rather be – he'd much rather be here tonight than in the nursing home, but – uh, I want to. I don't personally... think my dad would rather be here than where he. Well, uh, you're right. Your, so... dad, your dad's looking from a much much better place. Um, but uh, thank you to all of our veterans out there, and the Alabama High School Athletic Association asked us to read this as well. Uh, welcome everybody to tonight's broadcast, and thank you for supporting Alabama High School Athletic Association events. Our events would not be possible without the individuals and the military forces who have served and sacrificed so that our schools and communities may compete in educational athletics. While November 11th is dedicated solely to honor U.S. veterans, we must never forget the sacrifices that the veterans have made to defend our country and to protect our freedom. We must always remember, not just today, but every day, that because of their valor and service, we have the rights that we have today. On behalf of the Alabama High School Athletic Association, to those who have served and to those who are serving past, present, and future, and to the Alabama High School Athletic Association member school administrators, officials, and coaches who are veterans or in active duty. Thank you, and may God always bless you. Amen. All right. All right, well, let's let's turn on Coach Adcock and see what he has to say about the Gardendale Rockets. Hey, can I turn around and show the field while we're – No, we No, okay. 
<laughs> I Welcome keep pushing the, the limits. Preview huh? show with Coach Jerry Adcock tonight, brought to you by Alpha Agents Brandy Hatfield and Eric Carver. Good call or bad call, officials have the final say in sports and at Alpha Insurance. We know it's important for you to f- have the final say on your insurance plan we build for you. You can trust us to protect what's most important to you. Alpha Insurance. Always a good call. Indicator call Alpha Agents Brandy Hatfield and Eric Carver at 256-353-1591 or stop by their office at two, 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 <laughs> 2314. How about that? Sixth Avenue, Sweet E Indicator, Go Red Raiders. All right, Coach. Here we are, second round of the playoffs, and uh, we still playing, which is good. But before we get to tonight's opponent, let's talk about the uh, the game last week in the first round of the playoffs. The Fort Payne Wildcats yep. went over to Fort Payne, and and looked like we had a pretty good game. Yeah, we did. Uh, you know, we we played really well defensively. Uh, I mean, I couldn't have been more happy with how we played defensively. Uh, we stopped what they wanted to do best, and uh, I thought, you know, our pass defense, we gave up some late underneath, uh, and, you know, if we don't get a bad call on, on pass interference, which we did commit, it was actually offensive pass interference, or ball almost hit on the track, uh, they don't score on us. So, I'm really pleased with the way we played defensively. Um, super job. Thought our kicking game was outstanding. Uh, our kickoff coverage. Toto, Roberto put the ball where we needed it. He wasn't kicking as much depth as normally is. We got good height, and our coverage was unbelievable. Their, uh, their return yardage was, was very minimal. Uh, we almost broke one. Uh, they only kicked uh, one kickoff, and then – our onside team recovered the onside kick right after they scored. Uh, so, you know, punt wise, we handled things well. Uh, you know, John McDaniel was a his interception there in the first quarter. Kind of got us started a little. It bit. did. I mean, you know, we, we drove the ball, we were moving the ball, we bogged down a little bit, and we just kind of like back and forth, almost like we're, you know, heavyweight fighters trying to fill each other out. And uh, but you know, then we turn around and be a three and out. We do then three and out. So. We got to pass an uh, interception return, sixty, you know, about 61, 62 yards for a touchdown. And defense did a good job of picking up blocks. Oh, yeah, they did it. I mean, they did it like you practiced it, and it was just unbelievable. Uh, and it was pretty good blocks on that play. Uh, I knew when he got it back even with them, I said, they'll never catch him, and it wasn't even close. But uh, uh, that was big, and then, you know, had good drives, um, we we were 13 to 29 throwing the football, but we had six balls that hit us in the hands and dropped. Uh, and that, you know, that's that's quarterback puts it on your hands, you got to catch it. Right. And uh, Ellis had a couple throwaways uh, on purpose because coverage and was tight and he, he played that well. Uh, he uh, did a great, I mean, everything we did the other night involved a read off an RPO or he had to check protection and check certain routes. Uh, he did an outstanding job of reading the defense and setting us in the best plays. Ryan Kirk had an unbelievable night, night running football. He had 190 yards on 23 carries. Uh, he had about 100 yards after contact. How, how, he do, just, do y'all know how much he's got during the game, or do you no, find out? No, okay. we don't know. We don't ever know. Well, I just, I mean, I'd, I'd love know. for him to get t- a 10 extra yards to break it. Down. Yeah, I mean, it would have been nice, but I mean, we don't. You know, so you don't know that. We don't sit there. And we got enough going on. We don't chart all that kind of stuff. It'd be, you know, that would have been nice to have known that. But, you know, when, when we got it back at the end, uh, it was one of those deals, you know, we, we played Dayton some, we played JT some at tailback and our different packages, but. Ryan just had that night where he was seeing it and he was breaking tackles and he was making the right cuts and right reads off the blocks. And they did some stuff that, that you know, stopped how, where we want to run the ball at the point of attack. And then, you know, we actually had a lot of success with the wide zone against them. Could have been more had we not tried to break a few back up inside. But, uh, 
he, uh, I was real p- pleased with how we executed overall. I mean, I, it, was, it was a good night for us. I thought the offensive line played a good, a good They time. did. I mean, you know, we didn't, you know, we're so tiny. We don't knock a lot of people off the ball, but we got on people. We got them locked up. We got them, uh, you know, we got some movement. And when we got movement, we read the blocks. And, and, and you know, that's what we're designed to do. And, and we did what we were designed to do offensively. Well, some game balls. You know, I, uh, Jaron McDaniel definitely. Jaron McDaniel for sure. Uh, Ryan Kirk for sure. Uh, the unsung hero in the thing. Everybody always says, you know, quarterback gets too much credit or too little. But was, you know, offensively, Ellis made so many good decisions that resulted in somebody else having, having big game. Uh, you know, it was good. Like, we're, we didn't have Jaden. So it was good to sit there and see, you know, Jack Waller. Got some catches. Bo Belcher got some crucial catches on short yardage. Uh, and, you know, those two guys uh, had combined for seven catches right there. And we missed Bo on a, on a takeoff route. We talked wow. about it. <laughs> yeah, we talked about it. Coming off the field at, at halftime, Ellis said, Coach, you know, we got so and so and so and so. And him and Bo had talked about it. And that's the good thing about these guys. They they understand the game so well. So he said, let's, let's, he said, Coach, I got that anytime. So we had that kind of set up. And he said, if he keep jumping out because he's playing inside leverage, we know we got the out and up on him. So we do had a takeoff route and, and Ellis just overthrew. He was kicking himself because he had him, I mean, Bo had him beat. Yeah, I think he, he, yards. he overthrew him a good beat. Oh, gosh. <laughs> a little bit. I, I, when, I saw, when I saw what we were doing, saw the play, and saw how we were going to handle that day, we're thinking that's sick right there. And I look out there and I said, just put it on him. And I'm like, Lord, have mercy. And, uh, but, you know, happens like that sometimes. But uh, those guys did a great job and uh, really proud of the effort we got out of all of them. I, I tell you what, it's, it's, it's the second time we play Fort Payne. They got a beautiful facility. Golly, isn't it? Yeah. And, you know, you miss out on it if you don't get there early enough to see Yeah, that, because that the, big mountain the, right beside it. The, right. the trees and that setting and it's, the field and the stadium is just, just beautiful. Yeah, their logo, it, you, it, at first, Max told me when he came on, he said, hey, Coach Jackock told us not to not to get too concerned about the logo. And I, and I went online and, and pulled up Google Maps and I saw that little FP. I thought, that doesn't look that bad. But then the you got that mark. hidden watermark yeah. Yeah. that goes from like 30 to 30. Yeah. I mean, it's and, huge. Well, I talked to Coach Elmore about it. And he said, you know, the ironic thing about that is we don't even use that Wildcat really in our logo stuff. Yeah, and he said, "I said if we're going to do that, he said we need to start using it." So well, they're using it right now on the field. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so uh, it's it's a uh, it's a beautiful, beautiful setting. Well, what about um, what about injuries? Yeah, I mean, you know, we're fine injury wise. The biggest problem we got right now is you know we we we're, we're wrestling all this, you know, stomach bug, flu, strep throat, and whatever else pops up. I mean, it's just running rampant through the school. Let me ask you this: Do you, and you know, I, I probably know the answer, but you know, for if you got a, a, a an injury that involves a leg or an arm or a muscle or something, you got somebody yeah. here. Well, what about if if you got the flu? Do y'all have do you have doctors that will help that? You know, uh, are you just sending them home and hope they? Because a lot of these guys probably don't have a lot at home to help them with. Well, I mean, that's kind of a tough deal. You know, you, you, the the day is is such now that you know people are better off using their own physicians. Uh, you know, you deal with liability issues. You deal with a lot of things. I do wish we had. You know, we've, I love our medical staff with DOC, and they're, I mean, you couldn't ask for guys to be more helpful. Dr. Tapscott was there, and, you know, sometimes Dr. Real can't be there, but they're always going to have somebody there, and Dr. Tapscott was super helpful, unbelievable. Um, and he always is, all those guys are. But sometimes, a, you know, an a internal medicine or a general practitioner would be nice if you had a, a – you know, some type of sickness that he could diagnose and kind of get you headed down that path. Uh, I mean, it would be nice sometime, but, and, and we used to, you know, like we used to kind of have some of that, uh, Glenn Ward used to be on the sideline with us, associates over here. And, 
Uh, Glenn was really good. Uh, Dr. Prickett, Charlie Prickett was yeah. good. Yeah. I mean, we've always had those kind of guys. They were all tied into the program. Right. Uh, it's just, you know, things things change. People change. People go in and out. Kids graduate. And, and um, so, you know, uh, uh, Dr. And Cheatham. Me, Dr. Me, Cheatham. Me and you are left. Yeah, Dr. <laughs> Cheatham has is, is been kind of good. It, it's our trainer, Brad Cheatham's brother, and, and he's a – you know, he's a doctor, and he can kind of give us some guidance and, and lead us through some stuff. And, you know, here's the deal. If somebody has ever hurt, what we have to say is we have these people available if you choose to use them. Right. We can't make our people go to them. Right. And, and it's not our job to make It's just saying these people are here if you choose to use them. And that's that's the way it works. Well, Coach, in sports, every point counts, and at Alpha Insurance, we know when it comes to your budget, every dollar counts, and that's why we work to get you the lowest rates and the best discounts available. Plus, every Alpha policy comes with a personal service from our hometown team. Call Alpha to start saving today. In Decatur, call Alpha agents Brandy Hatfield and Eric Carver. Stop by their office at 2314 6th Avenue, Suite E in Decatur, Right next door to Bojangles, a proud sponsor of Decatur High School football. All right, Gardendale Rockets. Yeah. Right? Yep. yep. Let's see. I got my little sheet on. Good football. Dude. They are coached Chad by Chad Ease. Ease. Yep. He's been there since 2018. He has a record of 41 and 19. And I think we're playing another team we've only played one time, but the same omen. 2007, we beat Gardendale 20 to 3. Yeah. So we beat Fort Payne twice now. Now we're going to beat Gardendale twice. I'm now. good with that. But uh, they're, um, what is their region? There's region seven. No, we're region seven. Six. I think there's six. Six or five. Yeah. But they're in there with Gardendale, was first place Mount Brook. Gardendale beat Mount Brook by a point to, to win the region. Jackson, Olin, Parker, Minor, Woodlawn, and Mortimer, Jordan. Uh, just looking at their schedule, they started off with a big win against J- uh, James Clemens, then got beat by Calhoun, Ge- Calhoun Georgia, 31 to 30. Then they beat Kill Mortimer Jordan, beat Parker. Came up here and on the uh, early in the season and played Austin, and then went back with a loss to Austin Black Bear, 17 to 10. They killed Jackson Olin, killed Minor, Woodlawn, beat my Woodlawn. Then came Mountain Brook and beat them pretty bad. The last game of the season, they were handed – Hueytown handed it to them 35-21. to 21. And, of course, last week, 31-14 to 14 win over Oxford in the first round of the playoffs. Tell us about these guys. Very athletic, big. You know, when they walk in here, and I've already told our kids, when they walk in here, you know, our guys, I mean, people don't think it's UAB down there. I mean, they're, they're, they're monstrous size-wise. Uh, and, and that doesn't bother our kids. You just have to let, let them know. Hey, guys, they're going to be bigger than us, of course. We pretty much know that most people are going when they walk on the field. I mean, last week we were that's probably the first team that we've really been equitable size with, you know. Um, but um, they're big, they're athletic, they got some D one commitments uh, out of the senior class. Uh, they're they're very multiple with their defense. They're three three, base it out of a three three stack, but they're going to be in a lot of four man front. They're basically an eight, you know, uh, an eight-man front team. They're going to play a lot of zero coverage, some man-free. Uh, they got guys that can cover you well, uh, and uh, you know they're going to put pressure on them. They're going to do a lot of things to put pressure. They're going to move around a lot, try to create some confusion in what you're doing, and uh, and so you know they that's the way they are. They they rely on their defensive front to allow their linebackers to run because they've got, you know, they got some big, good, good players, 17 and, and 11 or, or two of the as good kids we've seen all year. And, uh, up front, yeah, no, no defense line. Okay. And, uh, so they're, you know, they rely on you having to lock double team them or lock down on them and let those linebackers run free and, and they can run. Uh, you know, offensively, their quarterback is the most athletic guy we've seen this year. Uh, he had 
an unbelievable night against uh, Mount Brook. I beat Mount Brook 29-28, scored 23 seconds left in the game, uh, went for two and made it. But their quarterback must have had over, you know, 250 yards rushing against them, broke three long runs. And, I mean, he can – he's – he is very athletic. He can run. He is strong. He's elusive. He's slippery. You know, he's everything that you want that guy to be. And uh, I say a junior, senior. Yeah, he's not a senior. And uh, so, you know, our job is, of course, they got good running backs and they got receivers that can hurt you. And our offensive line is very well coached. They're a young group up front. They're, they 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 they're more senior laden on defense than they are on offense. Our offense is a relatively young bunch and um a lot of juniors and sophomores in that bunch. But they uh, you know they they're driven by their quarterback and so our our challenge is going to be you know don't give the cheap one up. Uh, we got to tackle it. And uh we we've, we've had a good week of focusing on that. We put when we play an athletic quarterback, we put Devin Haley, our little eighth grader, that is the most – one of the most elusive guys we got. We put him at quarterback of the opponent scout team. And he will – sometimes he'll just go in places that you like. Why did he go there? Because he sees a creature. He sees an opening. Or he'll just – and we give – you know, we'll run the scout team plays and then give him a little freedom to freelance a little bit. And uh, and he can still throw it. Devin will throw it, and he can. So is he, he auditioning for quarterback. I don't know. So <laughs> so he can do some things back here to really make your defense have to chase a fast, quick guy. And Devin doesn't give you a good shot. So when when you come to tackle Devin, if you're doing what you're supposed to do, you're you're preparing yourself for the opponent's quarterback about as well as you can in the scout team situation. So. I've been pleased with our defense's his work with that, and uh, you know we got a hands full, and uh, we got to well, keep him in the pocket and make him throw it, and and don't let him get the cheap one. Well, I, I know that you've looked at you know all the film, but what did Austin do? Was there anything? So, that's what they did. I mean, you know, they were very patient running the football. Uh, Austin's really good with their gap scheme, and they're they're they, they're really good when they're in two tight ends. We're not a two tight end team. There's really not a lot you can take to use from what they well, did. Well, you know, the thing that they did was just block down, kick out, kick, fold, and, and had an extra guy in there that they're they're better at that than we are. And, I mean, that's their MO. It's not ours. Uh, we I like it, but we're just not good enough to do that. We're not. We're not. We're not good enough up front to be as that multiple. Uh we're still how, trying to learn to block the first plays we put in, and don't even make me go there. But uh, uh, you know, they just were happy getting three and four yards, and then they got you know every once in a while they'd squeak up a good pass in there on the goal line, and and they played really good defense, and they, and they kept the quarterback hemmed up, and uh, they did. You know, one of the worst things you can do with him sometimes is get over aggressive and create running lanes. Right. Right. And, uh, uh, I thought Austin and Hueytown did a really nice job of saying, okay, you, we, you're going to have to stay back here. We're not going to let you go, to, you know, create a crease for you. So, you know, that's part of our game plan, too. So we'll see it works. What do you think is going to have to happen to win the ball game? Well, that's going to be tough. Cause yeah, yeah. I mean, we got to do, we got to do what we do well. And, you know, the thing that, that sometimes you wrestle against when you're going against when you're going against really athletic good players. You got to look at them. Are you better running at them? Or better running away from them. And so there's some players you're better running at because they like making their plays run you down from behind. So we'll try running at certain people and blocking the the backside edge better. And uh, We'll try to read them a lot. Sometimes when you got big, good, athletic guys, you know that that you may struggle with matchups. Read them. So look for us to run at and then read, and uh, try to keep the guy in conflict. Uh, 
RPO game, especially if we get a lot of zero coverage and they're giving us pressure, look for us to throw a lot with our RPOs, which is who we are. And um, uh, then defensively, you know, it's, it's, we'll probably be in a lot more zone coverage this week. We're, you know, if you broke it down, we're a high percent man coverage team. But uh, you think that's what they're expecting? I, you know, I don't know. I don't know. I just know that we can't have our secondary running down the field, locked down on the receiver and a quarterback running. And it's not know where he is. Because, yeah. And, you know, for people that really don't understand football that much, that's what you see a lot on Saturdays. You see man coverage on guys and then all of a sudden that quarterback running forever. And, and there's right, nobody there. because there's nobody there. All, Everybody's yeah. locked up in man. And, uh, and so, uh, you know, that's what. What about the kicking game? Kicking game just solid. It's solid. Uh, you know, uh, they they put the ball in the end zone almost every time on the kickoff. Uh, you know, uh, the one thing they try to do on kickoff return, they try to wrap the return wide. Like if they catch it to the left, they want to go to the right. And we've worked on that all week. So, uh, you know, uh, we're gonna try to put a little pressure on the punter. But they're just they're just a solid group on the kicking game. Let me ask you this. Does, when it gets to playoff time, you know, I, I know lots of times I come in your office, you're talking to somebody and they happen to be a coach from somewhere. I mean, do the coaches that have played Gardendale, maybe do they voluntarily we, call no, you we, sometimes? Uh, most of the time we reach out okay. to those guys. Like I've talked to, we've talked to, you know, if, if I got a coach, if we got a coach on staff that knows a certain coach on another staff, we kind of like, we had one coach talk to Hueytown. I talked to Oxford. I talked to Austin. I talked to uh, Parker. Um, we had coach talk to Mountain Brook. I almost talked to Coach Yeager, but, you know, watching the film, I, I saw, I mean, Coach Yeager and I at Mountain Brook, we're very, very good friends. And I'm, I kind of met Colin, but one of our coaches, Talked to their line coach instead, and you know we we discussed some of that kind of stuff. So, you know, we contact five guys that we know we can communicate with, and uh, that happens a lot. Do you ever have a little bit more reservation to contact a coach that's still in the playoff versus one that's not? Yeah, yeah, because you know the guys. Know the stuff I mean, they're, they're working. You know, yeah. they're working. That's just out of respect. And, you know, that's one reason I didn't really call Coach Jagger. I mean. They, I know I know what my plate's been like this week, and you know it's like uh, it, there's uh, you know you have your you have your season pretty much stacked out in a routine, but when you get to playoffs, there's little variables that pop up like, hey, we got to get this program done. It's a different little playoff program, so we got to go take care of that. It's like and, you might have a different team coming and practicing on your field, yeah, like Wes yeah, Morgan is yeah, right now. Yeah, or they're coming over. Yeah. Here. So you know, there's little things that happen, and like you have to make some adjustments. You, you know, you have your meals planned, and then you know, our our moms handle our meal pregame meals, but but we, you know, it all runs through me, and so you have to make some adjustments. You have to make some plans. There's certain things that you don't want to overdo, so you're here, and then it's basically a week by week thing. Well, let, me, let me just, you know, for the people out there that, that might have, if you came by the stadium not too a few days ago, you looked out there and you thought, "There's another team out there." Yeah. <laughs> and I, I, went, I was bringing Max up here for something, and it was like West Morgan. I thought, "What in the world is West Morgan?" So tell us a little bit about. Well, Coach you know, Phillips called me during the weekend, and, and it's funny. I mean. This never bothers me. My wife says sometimes when I start to call a coach that, uh, well, you need to be you need to be more empathetic. It might be they may be having dinner with their family, and they may be this, they may be that. Well, <laughs> some of us are just football heads, and it's like we're, oh, we're talking about. I mean, I get tickled. I get phone calls from certain guys on Saturday night at seven or eight o'clock, and I'm thinking. That guy just like me, you know. <laughs> he's just like me. I said, "What are you doing?" What are you doing? Like man, what about so and so and so and so? And and, uh, and I'm always reluctant to call certain people, but you know, I'm glad. And so, Coach Phillips, you know, I'm, I've known him when he was at Athens, and he played for Bob Godsey at Brooks for a year, 
And, and so I've known Drew and, and then uh, Riley worked with him for spring at West Morgan when he took over that job there before we hired Riley back over here. So got a lot of respect for him. So he called and said, hey, look, you know, we're, we're going to Cherokee County and they got turf field. And he said, you know, we played over at Dexter and our kids just like, they, it was like they were walking on eggshells. He said, is there any way? I said, come on, come on. I said, so we worked out our schedules and said, I said, hey, me and him talked about it. I said, here's da 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 and we'll have, you know, it's going to be late. We'll turn the lights on for you. Come on. So uh, so we finished practice, and it was fun because our kids got to walk down and watch them for a little bit, and then our coaches went out there and visited with a lot of their coaches that, you know, during their warm-ups and stuff that we all know, and they were just super appreciative. And, and, and I went out there and watched. Once we got through with staff meet and I got laundry going, I went out there and watched some practice for an hour. And just, you know, it's – it's fun because you get to see how somebody else does practice. Right. And I was super impressed by the way they do it, how the coaches are engaged, how the kids are engaged, and the tempo that they practice at. It, it was it was fun to watch and uh, very well organized. And uh, I said, wow, I talked to him after, after the game, after practice. And uh, it was just good. It was good. And, uh, you know, glad to help out. And uh, I think nowadays it's – it seems like, at least around the people that we play, the only only turf, only grass field is at Hartsville. Yeah. And, and everybody yeah. else is turf. Yeah, I mean, we were on one grass field this year. Yeah. Now, when we go to Buckhorn and Hazel Green next year, we'll be on we'll grass. All right, your car, your car and home are your most valuable assets. Well, okay. Protect them both with Alpha. Having more than one policy with Alpha can help you save money. Call Alpha agents Brandy Hatfield and Eric Carver at 256-353-1591 to learn how you can bungle and save today, a proud sponsor of Decatur High School Athletics. Okay, uh, mystery question. And, uh, you know, you're going to have to put your thinking cap on this one. Yeah, like I haven't had to do so good. Okay. Uh, I'm just uh, – I think I'm just going to limit this to playoffs, to the playoffs. Okay. Name your favorite, or maybe not even your, you know, that you don't have to like them, but maybe you can respect them. Opposing player. Woo. So you've, you've, you've seen a lot, you've, you know, any, and you might not know their names, but you, it might be some dude that you played, we played, you know. Man, I mean, that that's, that's tough because, you know, you've got to go back a lot of years and, can any of them stand out? A lot of them stood out, unfortunately. <laughs> um, uh, my goodness. Um, Silence. I, I, well, I, I'm going to tell you, as I, as I think back on a lot of it, um, I, I would say – 1998, as, as I'm, I'm trickling through this thing, 1998, watching Robert Evans play, who's now the head coach at Best Davy, watching him play safety at Best Davy was. Was that the game we beat him? No, that's oh. when they beat us, 98. Oh, okay. uh, that was, I mean, watching him was, he was a fun player to watch. Uh, plays the game right. He, coached it, he coaches it just like he played it. And um, I had a lot of respect for the way he played the game. Uh, it, that was in 1998. We played him one time, got beat 38-24, I think it was. Barthel was a sophomore, and that was when we started, you know, that little run in there. Um, mm, you know, 2000, we play Hoover, uh, get beat. They had a lot of good players. Was it Parker Wilson? The Wilson boys? Uh, well, I don't know if John Parker was playing them then. Cause, no, he wasn't because we played them uh, regular season when Gerard was playing. And uh, Gerard picked him off three times and Trent Dean picked him off once and ran it back for a touchdown. And that was regular season. We lost that in an overtime early in the year. We lost that. Uh, you have a chance to win it. And Trent went down hurt, and uh, and we just couldn't get the job. We missed a couple of field goals in regulation. Uh, it, we could have won the ball game. We didn't get it done. Um, I had regulation, though. And they were, I mean, regular season. I mean, you know, it's a, 
I think that's when we beat Gardendale and come back next week, you'll have time to think about it. You know, I mean, I, I mean, I, I've always, I don't know. I mean, there have been so many good players on, on other teams uh, that we played against. Uh, well, I'm going to give you two of mine. Okay. Played against, uh, it was all my sophomore year. No, sophomore year and then junior year. Played against. Uh, I'm going to tell you who you're going to tell me. Who? You, Lenny Patrick Major Ogilvy. Lenny Patrick Major Ogilvy, yeah. right. That's right. right. I played against those two guys. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I mean, <clears throat> you know, when we played Clay Chalkwell, I mean, the Piglin kid that played quarterback down there, I mean, my gosh. He was. Squirrel three. White's up in Tennessee right yeah, now. Yeah. I, mean, I think he took the first play from scrimmage last year. Yeah. I mean, it, those guys were big. I mean, unbelievable. And then, uh, you know, last year watching Clay Chalkwell, I mean, they had their quarterback. I was very impressed with him. I loved their safety. Uh, and, and those, I mean, those those guys were really impressive to watch. Uh, I mean, they've just been a lot. They've been, been some good players. When you, get to, when you get to that level, there's always a bunch of guys. And, you know, you know I think one thing that helps sometimes if, 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 if there's a connection that you might have where you watch a kid a little bit more or know a little bit more about him or yeah. something like that. And they might have come to your quarterback camp or something. Yeah, you, yeah. You, you've gotten to know. Yeah. Well, Coach, um, it's going to be a tough game tonight, but I think we can do it. I do. I'm, you know, I'm excited. I'm excited about, you know, it, Mike Ward used to say, we talk, we would talk about this when he was principal, he'd say, you know, when you get playoffs, it, it's, it's the teams that, that aren't tired of playing, that those are the ones. And, and, you know, I watch our kids and I watch their energy level. And uh, Monday was was probably the worst Monday we've had practice. We also had a ton of starters out sick, and that didn't help. And, you know, we kind of discussed that very uh, enthusiastically. enthusiastically after practice. And uh, – and and they answered the bell, and you know, as I watched them during the rest of the week, I mean, the energy level, the excitement, the noise, the the I mean, we're practicing hard, but we're having fun, and and it's just those type of things are those are noises you listen for. There's certain noises in a locker room that you, if you're really in tune with your kids, you can tell whether it's clatter. Or whether it's really the chatter about the about their team, their team and the chemistry they have. And right now, I'm hearing a lot of that chatter, that just fun noise. Now, this is a playful group. You have to reel them in every once in a while. That's I mean, okay, coach. That's all right, though. <laughs> but you know, I'd rather have them excited and a little bit loose because I've watched us practice and we're doing some things like I want it done. Well, all right, Coach, you know what time it is. It's time to – oh, it's, it's a great day to be the Cater Red Raider, and it's time to play football. It's time to play football. Well, yeah. You've been listening to the Red Raider preview show brought to you by Alpha Agents, Brandy Hatfield and Eric Carver. Let's go on back up to the press box to get ready for kickoff. Good evening, everybody. And can you hear me now? Yeah, yeah you got me. All right, good evening, everybody. Welcome back to Oakville Stadium for tonight's matchup. Between the Decatur High School Red Raiders and the Garden Dale High School Rockets. Second round playoff action alongside me, John Godwin, and Brent Collins. So, looking forward to tonight's matchup. Uh, looking forward to see how we uh, how we react after a good week of, you know, a decent week of practice. I went, I was there for, I heard Coach talking about the Monday practice. You could tell there was a little bit of a, uh, uh, a letdown. Uh, there was a lot of folks out, a lot of folks missing uh, because of illness. Uh, but as the week went on, things got better. So looking forward to see how we react this week uh, uh, with this ball game. I'm not. I'm not so sure. I. I think. Uh, I haven't heard Coach Adcock talk about anybody being out uh, for from sickness. Uh, my understanding is Jaden Brown. There, there was a Jaden Brown sighting. There was on the sidelines. And, there uh, was a Jaden Brown sighting, so and, maybe uh, I, I, he was know, catching uh, touchdowns from the, what I saw. The uh, the senior just said, "I don't care," 
fix fix me up however I got to. But he, Coach Akak said he told him he was playing. He so, definitely had a doctor's excuse. So, so, <laughs> so yeah, and you know, Coach Akak said, you know, we were kind of pumped before we knew that, and then when Jaden came out in the uh, in the pads, yep. he said that took it to another level. So, you know, you don't know what's going to happen tonight. I, I think Decatur probably, if you if you if you had to look at it. Most people would think we'd be the underdogs and, and uh, coming in against, you know, it's a Birmingham school in uh, Gardendale. And, you know, we were watching them line up and in and, and, and warm-ups. And, man, they, they don't have just a couple of big guys, good-looking guys. They got – seems like half their team is. And I, I guess I'm glad, I'm glad that it's not one whole team on the field at the same time with the other whole team. It's a limited number of players. But, man, they just – they have a uh, – you know, a line of scrimmage that looks like uh, uh, Coach Atcock said UAB, and you know, well, uh, you got uh, you got a three hundred fifteen pound offensive lineman, three ten offensive lineman, three fifteen offensive lineman, and those lineman. guys are six six two, six, six three, five. six five. So it's you yeah. know, I don't think we've seen a six five guy around here. I don't know. I don't know if we've ever had a six five guy. You know, and the the good news about our guys is our psyche. You know we're we're not going to get and Coach Atcock's already warned them they're they're big guys and um, but they're not they're not going to be intimidated by our guys or we're not going to be intimidated by their guys. No, so. I don't think so. And and you know it's they they just because they're big doesn't mean that you can't go out there and move them out of the way or you you, you can't you know beat them or whatever you're doing. But it's just one of those. Things I think you, maybe Nick had talked about, it, but we we just can't uh, afford to, you know, give them things. You know, we can't afford to to give them a fumble or, or an interception, or you know, if if uh, Ellis is running for his life, he's got to be able to to do the right thing and, and and get the ball out of his hands, whether you know, just to avoid the sack or avoid avoid those lost plays. So, you know, we know what we need to do, and. Uh, it's gonna be fun. It's gonna be fun to see what see how Decatur matches up yeah. against Gardendale. To wrap up that thought, the uh, uh, Gardendale has three commits already to uh, college ball. Number one for them, Dallas Young, a defensive back, is going to the University of Arkansas. He's six foot one, one hundred eighty five pounds. Number five, their quarterback Tyler Nelson has committed to UT Martin, six foot one, one hundred eighty five pounds. And number seventeen. Kelby Collins is going to play defensive end at Listen Florida. Listen this guy, 6'4". 6'4", 265. Yeah, that's a defensive end. That is their defensive end. I think we could get on top of each other and we'd be about the right size <laughs> and weight. I don't think anybody wants to see that. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, while they're, they're about to have the uh, – the uh, that's anthem, but we are – um, why don't somebody, why don't you guys tell them what we're doing on the on the video? All right, so we cannot show the game, we cannot show the film or the field. So in order so that people, when they tune in, that they can see that something's going on instead of a black screen, we're just going to keep this camera right here. You're on getting the, to see the bacon being and made, so, <laughs> or the sausage uh, just, being made, right? We're, no, we're baking. We we're are baking. Unfortunately for you, you'll have to look at us the entire game. Yeah, I don't. We are about to have the national anthem, and I believe I don't know if they're going to be playing the anthems of the um, uh, civil of the armed forces. But I want to remove my headphones so you can hear the national anthem.
red. The flag and the colors are now being marched off the field. But we're going to go ahead and we're going to go ahead and get started. You want me to go ahead and do this? Yeah, how about that? Tonight's ball game. One of our sponsors is the Rail Yard. If you're looking for lunch or dinner, look no further than the kind folks down at the Rail Yard in historic downtown Decatur. Whether you're having a quick lunch with friends or dinner with the family, check out one of Decatur's hot spots for delicious farm to table cuisine paired with local craft beer from all over the region. Stop by or call us today. The Rail Yard, proud sponsor of Decatur High School football. 209A, 2nd Avenue in historic downtown Decatur. Since 1960, when Ralph Jones started the business, Jones Financial Services has been providing Decatur and surrounding communities with their life insurance, retirement planning, investment strategies, long-term care, and general financial planning with all types of products to fit the needs of each individual. College funding, mutual funds, annuities. Call Mike Jones at 256-353-8224 to set up an appointment today. The Jones family are three generations that have supported Decatur Red Raider Athletics. Go Red Raiders. River Bank and Trust, local banking expertise, the newest innovations and technology, personal attention, unexpected hospitality. It's all part of the River Bank and Trust difference. We invite you to experience it for yourself. Call Ashton DeMint at 256-957-7013 or go see the folks at River Bank and Trust at their downtown Decatur location at 254 Moulton Street and let them serve you. Proud sponsor of Decatur Red Raiders. Decatur High School football would like to thank Stan Evans and folks at Evans and Harris CPA for support of our program. Go Red Raiders. Is your truck kind of boring? Is your truck kind of boring? Mine is not, no, truck. I've, I've got a lift on it. Oh, okay. Yeah. Red Beard Solutions <laughs> specializes in vehicle uplifting. We are your go-to for lift kits, wheels, tires, lights, lights, and more lights. I need some more lights. I mean, I need some lights, too. <laughs> we can do it all. Knock the boring off your truck at Red Beard Solutions and contact us by phone at 256-355-4747. Or you can email us at info at redbeard.solutions. Or you can just come by 1222 4th Avenue Southeast, Decatur, Alabama, 35601. Go Red Raiders. Did you know Bendall's Pharmacy offers free delivery within the city limits? Call or come by our store at any with any questions. 1316A at Trafford Road, Southeast, Indicator, Alabama, 256-353-2021. Go Red Raiders. Whataburger is a proud sponsor of Decatur Red Raiders. Visit the Beltline Road location tonight after the game. Let B&B Roofing help you with all your roofing needs. We offer top quality residential and commercial roofing services, such as leak repairs, installations, and more. Since 1967, we have aimed to meet and exceed the expectations of our customers. How we do that? By providing quality workmanship and outstanding service. Turn to our professionals for roofing services, decking repair, seamless gutters, and more. Our company is fully bonded and insured for your protection. Call Michael Burnett at B&B Roofing today. At 256-355-7826. B&B Roofing, a proud sponsor of Decatur High School football. I think that gets all of our sponsors. We uh, certainly do appreciate you spending uh, the time with us this this year as sponsors uh, for the 2022 football season. And uh, look forward to our continued relationship in coming years. But I also also need to go through and and talk about our uh, school board sponsors, Encore Rehabilitation. Lynn Layton, Chevrolet, Ford, Nissan, Cadillac, or Gobble Fight Lumber Company, Water, Water Everywhere, and Decatur Orthopedic Clinic. Those are the guys that have stepped up and are and footed the bill to, to be on the school board, uh, sponsors on the school board, so you can come here to Oakland Stadium and look up. When you're looking at the school board, you can see those guys on there, and we appreciate what they do. Well, it's a good group of uh, captains tonight, Nick. Yep. Uh, uh, captains are making their way out towards center field for Decatur. Number seven, ZJ Matthews. Number three, Ryan Kirk. Number 22, Jaron McDaniel. And number four, uh, Ellis Dickman for Gardendale. They're, sp- they're uh, captains tonight. Number 17, Kelby Collins. Number 15, uh, Ty Fairley. And number three, three Kedrick Story. Uh, both uh, sets of captains ha- are now meeting at midfield, and we are moments away from having the coin toss. And uh, we've got the cannon. Coming yeah, up, be careful here. Well, man, I know, man. You can't, you can't look. I, I got to look down there, so I can see it when he <laughs> lights it. So you can't, you can't flinch on the camera today, tonight. 
Okay, Gardendale won the toss, and they have elected to receive. Gardendale will be defending the south end zone. Decatur High School will be de uh, defending the north end zone. We are four minutes and 19 seconds away from kickoff. Decatur is now taking their positions behind their spirit sign, and the Gardendale Rockets are moving back behind their spirit sign as well, getting and ready for a cannon blast. Here we go. <laughs> Anticipation. I like the ketchup coming out of the bottle finally. We're just still looking, still looking. He's trying to get it lit. You need to go down there and help Oh, there it goes. Here, Here it go. comes. Did it go out? Oh! <laughs> and with the cannon blast, the Decatur High School Red Raiders takes to the field. Tonight, Decatur is wearing their traditional red helmet with the black Decatur D on both sides. Center stripe of black with two white stripes on either side. Red jerseys with white trim. And tonight, John, we are wearing white pants. That's yeah, a good thank, look. Thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, it's not the black pants. And, not the gray, gray pants. Gray pants, but the white pants. The Gardendale team is uh, massing in the south end zone. They are wearing white helmets with white jerseys. They have black trim on their jerseys, black numerals. They are also wearing white pants with a black uh, stripe down the leg, and they will be coming through their spirit sign here very, very soon. Tonight's probable starting lineups, gentlemen, for Decatur on offense, number nine, Jaden Brown, number 10, Braden Duper uh, at the H position, left tackle, number 64, Crawford Fight, left guard, number 76, Compton Mulligan, uh, number uh, 74, Cody Asher at center. Right guard, number 75, Harris Penley. Right tackle, number 61, Nate Steeples. At the Y position, Jack Waller. Number 21, Bo Belcher. Uh, at, at running back, Ryan Kirk, number three. Quarterback, number four, Ellis Dickman. On defense tonight, uh, at defensive end, Adolfo Soto, number 50. Defensive end, Colby Brown, number 39. Nose tackle, Tenarius Finnell, number 97. Inside linebackers, Tommy Kazir, number five. Paxton Duper, number 19. Outside linebackers, Mylon Miller, number 34. And Trey Ayers, number 15. At corners, Jackson Thatch, number 11. Jaira McDaniel, number 22. Safety, ZJ Matthews, number seven. And Josh Turner, number one. The Gardendale Rockets have broke through their spirit sign, and they are gathering in the east side of the stadium on their sideline and we are moments away from kickoff you know it's a good great playoff atmosphere uh we got a looks, good crowd yeah, it looks decatur's like decatur's got a good traveled crowd. well and decatur's got a good crowd and and this is why you play the game right that yes. is exactly why you right. play the game decatur as you listen will be kicking from left to right uh the gardendale team is now uh taking to the field Back deep for uh, Gardendale will be number two, Jiden Arrington, number 14, Caden McGruder, and number six, Jonathan Harris. Back deep for Decatur to kick is Toto, and we are underway from Ogle Stadium. Gardendale takes the kick around the 15-yard line, out across the 20, breaks the Decatur tackle, makes his way across the 25, maybe up to the 27, where it will be first down and 10 for the Gardendale Rockets. Timothy Terry down there on that, uh, that tackle, but... One thing Coach Atcock talked about is they like to take to swing that uh, that kickoff out wide, and that time we did the little corner kick, and uh, they the Gardendale did just that. They tried to take it wide, but we made them run east and west. First down for Gardendale. All right, first down at ten for Gardendale. They are led by uh, number five Tyler Nelson uh, at running back. Also number six Jonathan Harris. It's going to be a give up the middle. He's going to be lucky to pick up a yard, maybe two on the play. It's going to bring up second down. Yeah, Toto in there on that stop, and uh, looks like airs to crashing down from the uh, defensive end position. Just underway here at Ogle Stadium, 11.30 remaining in the first quarter, no score. Nelson, shotgun position, has bunch left, two receivers also to the right. He's going to throw a quick out into the right side. There's a penalty on the play. The catch is made, and he's going to step out of bounds at the 34-yard line, but hold on for the penalty. Should be offsides on the receiver. 
Yeah, you're the illegal you're right. procedure against Gardendale. You saw him. So. You yeah. saw him. He lined up offsides. I think he lined up offsides. So back up every back up the Gardendale Rockets. It's going to put them at the twenty six yard line, where it's going to be second down and thirteen. I've got to remember we have no video, so I've, I've got to got to be descriptive. You do. <laughs> All right. Nelson, that quarterback, pistol formation, has his running back standing to his left, keeps the ball, and he's going to break up the middle, picking up good yardage as he passes the 30 up to the 35-40. Doesn't quite make it up to the, his own 45-yard line, but it is first down yardage for the Gardendale Rockets. Yeah, that number five, the quarterback, he, he really struck fast right there, and uh, we, we're going to have to be on our toes to keep he's, him at bay. He's the one. He's the motivator for the team. He's the one that drives the, the offense. Takes the snap. Nelson's going to look to throw it. It's going to throw it. It's going to be, oh, should have been intercepted almost. No. Oh, they're going to call pass their, interference their feet against got the tangled. Decatur. Uh, both t- yeah, Decatur, Jaira McDaniel, and Josh Turner was back there deep, and they got their legs intertwined, and that is not a penalty. In- in- incidental leg in- uh, entertainment entanglement <laughs> is not a penalty. But it's going to be called against the Red Raiders yeah, here. It's a penalty because yeah. they called it. Yep. Okay. Coach Atcock doesn't like that. It's not a penalty. Rightfully so. It's a bad call. It's going to put the ball all the way over into uh, Decatur's territory. It's going to be spotted down at the 42-yard line. All right. Far hash mark. Nelson has his running back, Harris, standing to his right. Bunch left. Takes the snap. Looking to his left. Wanted to throw deep. Nothing there. He's going to have a wide open receiver right at the hash marks. Standing at the 35 for uh, Gardendale was number 81. The, was not able to make the catch. Slipped right through his hands. Fortunate play for the Decatur Looks Red Looks like Raiders. a holding right here on Gardendale. No, another e- illegal procedure. Carter Jenkins let that one slip through his hands. But fortunately for Decatur, it's going to be a holding penalty. Back them up to the 47-yard line, still in Decatur territory. Still first down, though, with 10.49 remaining in your first quarter. Nelson takes the snap, keeps it, looks up the middle, picks up maybe four yards on the play. We got another gets, flag. Gets I the didn't ball see it. up okay. to the 23. Tom, Tommy Kazir did a good job hitting his hole right there and uh, or his gap and stopping him for a little to no gain. Second down and 11 for Gardendale. Nelson with Harris standing to his right, yelling out instructions, has a wing to his left, single receiver far side, two receivers near side. Now the wing goes in motion, which goes over to the right back. side, and Decatur jumps offside. And ah. so that's that will be a five-yard penalty against Decatur. And that is something, unfortunately, that has reared its ugly head a whole lot here recently. We, you know, John, that's something that didn't happen last week, you know, and that's something we said that these mistakes can't happen. We can, just can't keep them in the game. And uh, now we've made a very manageable second down. Second down and six for Gardendale. 10 6 in the first quarter. No score. Nelson has Harris standing to his left, takes the snap, looking to throw the ball deep. It's going to roll out to his right, still under pressure. Nope, it's going to be thrown out to the right side. Good catch made past the 20, up to the 15-yard line, to the 10 of Gardendale. And Gardendale has broke all the way down inside the Decatur 10-yard line, probably to the 5. It was a great throw, but uh, the Decatur defender over there tried to knock it down. Yeah, he he went for the ball and not for the defender, and uh, the ball got past him, and and he was out of the play. Spread it down the sideline all the way to the five-yard line. Was that Trey Ayers that uh, got down on the goal line to track him down? It looked like it. All right, so first down and goal to go for Gardendale Rockets. Nelson is has two running backs either side of him. It's going to be a loss on the play. Decatur sniffed that one out quickly. Nelson gave the ball quickly to his running back, Harris, who went to the left side. Decatur probably stacked him up for a two-yard loss. It's going to bring up second down. Yeah, had some of those uh, defensive backs coming in and, and helping on that tackle, knocked him backwards, but that was Colby Brown. That was a good job by Decatur. Lots of times when they show two running backs on either side of Nelson, he likes to sneak it up the middle. Nine minutes remaining in the first quarter, no score. Watch for a quarterback keeper right here. Yes. Nelson has two receivers near side, one receiver far side with the H or wing standing to the right. 
has motion now across the formation, sends him back. Nelson takes the snap, looking to run it up the middle. Once again, there's a host of Red Raiders there, and he's going to go down. No pick up for the play. Josh Turner in to make the big play for the Decatur Red Raiders. Yeah, they're just trying to uh, take a quarterback keeper up the middle and uh, letting him try to find a pick and hole and tried to bounce it to the outside, but Josh Turner was right there and spun him down for no gain, third down, and uh, goal to go from the eight. Ball is spotted on the far hash mark. Gardendale is moving from right to left. They're right now trying to score in the north end zone. Still 0-0 zero, zero no early in the first quarter. No score. Nelson has Harris standing to his right, has motion across to the left, looking to throw the ball. Pressure off of the right side for the cater. It's going to spread over here to the left side, throw the ball, and it's incomplete. Incomplete in the back of the end zone. Once again, great pressure there by Decatur, number 39, putting the pressure on was Colby Brown. Yeah, just uh, Colby Brown from the far side, and uh, quarterback sprinted out to the near side toward us and just couldn't find anybody. Nice job by the defensive backfield to have everybody covered. Well, if we can hold them to three three uh, points right here, Trey Ayers saved a touchdown. Number 19, the kicker for Gardendale is Kyle Norris. Good snap, kick is away, and the kick is good. With 7.52 remaining in your first quarter, Gardendale leads Decatur by a score of three to nothing. But like you got, like you guys said, it kind of feels like a little victory right there. I think what, what that drive told our defense is that we can play with this group. You know, we, we stopped them on a lot of occasions. We had that one offsides, defensive offsides, and um, kept them well, you know, relative you, in that drive. You go back to this pass play that they did, their, their pass play that got them down inside the 10. Looked like we were, we had we were in position Good to coverage. make, make a, a interception yeah. on the sidelines, and it just I, we must have gone through right through our hands and into the hands of it the did. the receiver. But uh, you know, just an opportunity that maybe missed for us to come up with a pick. But you're right. I think even though they come up with three points on that particular drive, there's a number of times when we you know we didn't get blown out. So hey, maybe we're uh, maybe we play in this game. We are. All right, Decatur takes to the field with their kickoff team. Back deep for Decatur will be number 22, Jiren McDaniels, and number 17, Drake Trey Greenwell. Uh, back deep to kick for Gardendale is their extra point kicker, number 19, Kyle Norris. He has it spotted up on the 40, and the kick is away. Low line drive kick. It is going to come down to the three yard line where it's taken by Jiren McDaniels. Sprints out across the 15, makes it across the 20, up past the 20, up close to the 30-yard line, giving the 29, where it will be first down and 10 for the Decatur Red Raiders. Yeah, nice return by Jyron McDaniel and uh, found a little crease and uh, was able to get it up to the 30-yard line. Uh, I think Jyron's staying on his high from last week. Hopefully he can keep it going and uh, lead the defense and uh, maybe he can break one for a touchdown on the kick return. All right, Ellis Dickman leads Decatur out onto the field. Uh, Ellis right now has two running backs standing either side of him. He has Ryan Kirk and looks like he has Colby Brown off to – or uh, I'm sorry, Jacoby. Uh, uh, Jaden Brown standing to his right. Pass is complete. It's going to be a pickup for Decatur of about eight yards up to about the 38-yard line of Decatur. Good pickup on first down. Kevin Duke. Good job by Ellis checking down – second or third receiver to Kevin Duke. Jaden Brown is split out near side, near the Decatur sideline. Waller and Duper and Ryan Kirk are all now swapping sides on the field. Kirk stands beside Ellis, and he takes the handoff, trying to pick up first down yardage, and he does. First down for the Decatur Red Raiders out past Decatur's own 40-yard line. You know, that's one of the things that uh, we we are a lot better team when we can get something positive on first down and – that time with eight eight on first down, two to go for second, Ryan Kirk easily makes the first down. Decatur has two receivers near side, two receivers far side. Ellis sends everybody in motion. Now we reset. Waller goes across the formation to the left. It's a low snap where it's picked up by Ellis, trying to break free. He's going to be dragged down. He's going to be lucky to make it back to the line of scrimmage, and I think he did. He's going to bring up second long with 634 remaining in your first quarter. Gardendale leads three to nothing. I don't think that was a bad snap. Did you see the snap? Yeah, he, Ellis could have handled it. Um, just kind of got away from him. 
He did a good job of recovering, though. Yeah, he did. Jaden Brown, Waller, near side. And on the far side, Duper and Belcher. Once again, Waller swaps spots, goes to the far side. Ellis takes the snap, hands off, and boom, right there, Gardendale is going to deny any pickup on the play. It's going to bring up a second down and long. Ryan didn't have a chance on that play. Yeah, it's going to be a third down and uh, third down and long. Play's going to lose two yards, and that's where that big defensive end over there from Florida looked like he was uh, he was pretty much unblocked coming in. Yeah, we just can't lose a down like we did. Third down and 12 for Decatur. The ball is spotted at their own 39-yard line. Needs to get past the midfield stripe up to the Gardendale 49. Ellis takes the snap, looking to throw the ball deep, and it's going to be off the outstretched hands of Braden Duper. Floats out of bounds, incomplete pass, and it's going to bring up fourth down for Decatur. Yeah, I mean, it was a good pass, and, and Duper was there on the reception. Just floated a little bit too much, and uh, – and he couldn't come down with it. So uh, we got a punt on fourth down here. Back deep for Gardendale will be number four, Jackson Firestone. Mac Ellis will be punting the ball for Decatur. Trey Ayers, long snap, good snap, and we have an instant whistle when the – I don't think that we – When the ball was snapped, we had an instant whistle. I'm not so sure that – what, what are we doing? The flag came from all the way back uh, here behind the re returner. Ineligible participation. Gardendale has 13 players on the field. So right. that will be a mark off against Gardendale of five yards. That's going to put the ball down at the 44-yard line. Still nowhere close to enough yardage for a first down. It's going to be fourth down and seven for Decatur. Good snap and uh, good kick is what we need right here. Trey Ayers, good snap, a little low, handled though. Matt gets the kick away, end over end kick. It's going to bounce around the 27 and a good kick for Decatur. It's going to roll all the way inside the 20, the 15, close to the 10 yard line. What a kick for Matt Hillis. It's going to be first down for Gardendale at their own 11 yard line. I don't know if I agree with the Gardendale uh, letting that go. Because he could have saved 20 yards, I don't. I don't think the coaches over here agree with it either. Well, I think their their uh, up back was thinking it was going to go bounce out of bounds, and it was going toward the out of bounds, but it checked up and rolled back into the middle of the field. So it's first down and uh, 10 from the 11. 519 remaining in the first quarter. Gardendale leads three to nothing right now. Number six, Jonathan Harris takes the handoff from his quarterback Nelson. Mm. He's breaking around off the right side, giving five six yards on the play. It's going to bring up second down. Yeah, you know, Josh Turner did a good job of, of containing, but he, he kind of whiffed at the end. He whiffed it, yeah. yeah. He whiffed it, and he got uh, seven yards ball, after a whiff. Ball is all the way out to the 17, 17-and-a-half 17 yard line. Two receivers near side. Motion coming from the other side to this side. Now he's going to go back to the other side. Nelson is once again getting everybody set, trying to give everybody instructions as to what to do. Takes the snap, hands the ball to Harris. Harris is trying to push for first down yardage, and he's not going to get there. He's going to be lucky to make the 20-yard line where it's going to be third down and one. Good, by, good job by Paxton Duper and uh, Trey Ayers on that uh, to prevent them little to no gain. Nelson is going to get up underneath center, take the snap. It's going to be a quick snap, and it's going to be a first down yardage. Got up under center and took a real quick snap. And it's, it's a uh, penalty flag coming Yeah, the down. flag is now coming in. I can't believe that they were set. Um, <laughs> yeah. Doesn't appear they were. Illegal shift. They were not set. So, Gardendale kind of out, out, out thinks themselves. What, what happened was we had two receivers out here near side, and they were still trying to figure out who was on and off the line of scrimmage, and they were still moving around. Regardless, they were not set at the snap of the ball, and uh, it's going to be a five-yard penalty. Still, Gardendale three, Decatur zero with uh, four minutes left in the first quarter. Trips on the near side for Gardendale. Single receiver near side. Nelson with Harris standing to his left, takes the snap, looking to throw the ball. Looks to his right, throws a BB out to mm. the right side, and it is a great catch. Uh, how in the world he got one foot in, I don't know. Yeah, very good back shoulder pass right there. Ball is all the way out to the 34-yard line. Plenty of yardage for the Gardendale first down. Yeah, Gardendale comes up and hurries, but, yeah, you're exactly right. That's a college throw right there. 
34-yard line of Gardendale. It's a real quick handoff to Harris, breaking around mm. the right side. Foot race to the end zone, all the way inside Decatur territory, inside the 20, up to the 5. Caught by Decatur Red Raider is Nelson. I'm sorry, is Harris for the Gardendale Rockets. He's speedy himself. Brought down by Josh Turner. Josh Turner. That could, yeah, could prove again to be very important. I mean, if we can hold these guys to three points. Well, we, they're lining no up quit. right quick. Josh Turner's a little needs a breather. Nelson takes the quick snap under center at the two yard line. Tries to push forward, may pick up a half a yard on the play. Good play by the Decatur defense, denying him the end zone. It's going to be second down from the two yard line. Yeah, you just uh, he found a little crease, and uh, Josh Turner, you have to give him a lot of credit. Uh, looked like their guy was going to score easily, but he ran up behind him and drug him down and. See if we can hold them to three again. Three minutes and five seconds remaining in the first quarter. Uh, Gardendale leads by a score of three to nothing. Nelson, with a tight formation, takes the snap, hands it off to one of his wings, and he's going to be smacked down in the backfield. Not going to pick up any yardage on the play. Once again, it's going to be a third down and two from the two. Adolfo Soto came in there and got him. And Trey Ayers was uh, assisting on that tackle. I'll even venture to say he lost half a yard on the play. It's at back close to the three-yard line. So it's going to be third down and three for Gardendale from the three-yard line. Nelson has Harris standing to his right, single receiver far side, single receiver near side with a wing to his left. Hands it off to Harris, pushing for the end zone. It's grabbed by the Decatur Red Raiders, and no signal from the officials. No, I believe it's going to be stacked them up. I believe that we've had another stop. Fourth down. They may be willing to go for it here. The officials are putting up their hand. It's going to be fourth down and goal to go for the Gardendale Rockets. Yeah, they're putting their big package in. Right now, the Gardendale Rockets. <laughs> you mean Rockets, they're putting their bigger package in? Bigger package. <laughs> they just tr- Good point, John. They just trotted on their jumbo package, if I've ever seen one. Number That's 17, definitely. the Florida Gator uh, uh, commit is coming in. So, he's normally playing defensive end. He's that in there for the uh, – the short yard play well, for their offense. They've called a, a timeout, 153 left in the quarter. And, you know, just uh, seemed like that we've been able to have the ball very long. And uh, But it would be big if we could hold them here at, on a fourth down. But I, I think you're right. They they probably think if we if we don't make it, uh, Decatur's pinned back deep. And uh, if we do, then, then you know, all, all's, all's good. But Decatur's – Shown itself to be pretty tough on the defensive side of the ball when it gets inside the 10-yard line. All right, a minute 53 remaining in the first quarter. Gardendale leads by a score of three to nothing. Both teams are making their way back out onto the field, and Gardendale does still have their jumbo package in. Nelson, standing in a pistol formation, has a running back either side. Now he sends his left one in motion, and we have a flag. And we have illegal procedure against the Gardendale Rockets. That's going to be a five-yard penalty. Back them up five more. Now they're going to bring in the kicking team. Here comes the kicking team, yes. That's probably five procedure calls on them already on Gardendale. Four or five. All right, so running in once again for Gardendale is number 19, Kyle Norris. Their holder is number 10, Sawyer Norris. The long snapper, number 55, Christian Higgins. The kick will be from about the 14-yard line. No, oh, offsides. Again. Offsides again. The illegal procedure against Gardendale. If you're curious, the kick was good, but it will be nullified by the penalty. Back them up another five yards. It's going to be another uh, another try for a, uh, for a field goal. Yeah, one of the Decatur guys just kind of flinched a little bit, and it caused the offensive lineman to raise up and five yards back. All right, this time from the 19-yard line. Good snap. Hold is down. Kick is away. And the kick is no good. The kick is no good. There you go. You need a break every once in a while, and Decatur just got a big one. Man, complete effort right there. I go back to Josh Turner. The first drive, it was Trey Ayers that saved the touchdown. 
On that drive, hey. it was it was the hammer, Josh, Josh Turner. I, I'm telling you, I, I know that you guys didn't see it, but Josh Turner gave everything he could to, to drop the guy before he got in the end zone. And Josh Turner's the reason why it's still three to nothing right now. And tell the listeners real quick why they're looking at us and not the field. Well, because we can't show you the field, and Decatur just got a penalty for illegal, illegal procedure. It's illegal an illegal substitution. substitution. Apparently, somebody's on the field that's not supposed to be. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Jaden's coming off. Yep, they have an extra one out there. Jaden was on the field, and he wasn't supposed to. So that's going to be a five-yard mark off against the Red Raiders, bringing up first down of fifteen. We're not allowed to show you the action that's going on on the field. You have to look at us. So we're trying to do our best to describe to you what's going on. Ellis claps his hand, takes a snap, hands it off to Ryan Kirk. Ryan comes over here to the right side, picking up one, two, three, may, maybe four yards on the play. It's going to bring up second down. Good job by our offensive line getting some forward uh, push on, on their defensive line and uh, enough for four down, four uh, yards on that down. Folks, when you look at the size of their defense and the size of our offense, it is a noticeable difference. They are absolutely huge. All right. A minute 20 remaining in the first So quarter. they said we lost two yards? No, we no. actually picked up. We were first oh, yeah, right, and 15. Right, right. We do have a stoppage in play right now. Somebody doesn't have our knee covered yep. or something. Number one for Gardendale. <laughs> Dallas Young is being sent off the field because he is improperly equipped. So onto the field runs number 21, Donovan Marshall at defensive back. Now we're ready for play. Ellis. Runs up to the line of scrimmage, tells his lineman something. He's got Ryan Kirk standing to his right, two receivers far side, single receiver near side, looking to throw the ball out here to oh, yeah! at the, at the yeah! 40 across the 30-yard line. What a catch by a one-handed receiver, Jaden Brown. <laughs> yeah, nice job. And not only Jaden Brown doing a nice job, but uh, Ellis Dickman put the ball right in there where his guy could catch it. And uh, Jaden Brown just reached out and just kind of picked it out of the Hit him right in stride, man. And he didn't just catch that with one hand. He caught it with the bad hand, too. He did. (laughs) (laughs) All right, so we're at the 30-yard line of Gardendale. It's going to be a real quick uh, snap. Ryan takes the snap. He's going to be lucky to get back to the line of scrimmage as he comes over here to the right side. Maybe give him half a yard on the play, bringing up second down. Yeah, they're just pushing pushing us going east and west instead of north and south. And uh, first down, get – Get no yardage on first down. We talked about that, how critical it is for Decatur not to become behind the sticks. Under 30 seconds in the first quarter, Ellis going to fake his hand clap to move everybody to their new position, has Ryan standing behind him. Once mm. again, he's hand off to Ryan, and he's met in the backfield. There's going to be a loss of one on the play. There's Gardendale Rockets that are just bleeding through the Decatur offensive line. Well, it's like there's six Gardendale Rockets uh, tackling number three in red, and uh, there's no Red Raiders around either. So that's the end of your first quarter. And the first quarter. He first had, quarter the, sponsor. The first quarter sponsor was the rail yard. How about give me the first Man, quarter? we got to have the rail yard. If you're looking for lunch or dinner, look no further than the kind folks down at the rail yard in historic downtown Decatur. Whether you're having a quick lunch with friends or dinner with family, Check out one of Decatur's hot spots for delicious farm-to-table cuisine paired with local craft beer from all over the region. Stop by or call us today. The Rail Yard, proud sponsor of Decatur High School football. 209A, 2nd Avenue in historic downtown Decatur. While you're doing go Red it, Raiders. while you're doing it, just flip the page and, and go back uh, and go back to give me the second quarter <laughs> sponsor. Is second Mike Jones. quarter when Mike Jones since 1960 when Ralph Jones. Started the business. Jones Financial Services has been providing Decatur and the surrounding communities with their life insurance, retirement planning, investment strategies, long-term care, and general financial planning with all type of products to fit the needs of each individual. College funding, mutual funds, annuities. Call Mike Jones at 256-353-8224 to set up an appointment today. The Jones family are three generations that have supported Decatur Red Raider Athletics. Go Red Raiders. I was looking down there, Ryan Kirk uh, coming off the field and has a little limp going on and a uh, little ankle like issue, you D- think? D- Dayton Swope's going into the game. All right, ready for second quarter action. It's going to be third down and 11 for the Red Raiders. Right now, Ellis is alone in the backfield. He has 
taking the snap. He's rolling over here to his left side. It's going to be a pass mm. and catch. No, it's going to be a drop. Uh, Toto to try to come in and kick a field goal. And that time, uh, Gardendale brought their linebackers. Both of them blitzed and uh, pretty much free coming through the line of scrimmage and it's going to force that fourth down. All right, so Decatur elects to go for it here on fourth down and 11. Ellis is going to stay into the ball game. We have two receivers either side of the formation. Ellis takes the snap, looking to throw the ball deep, trying to hit Jaron McDaniel, and it's going to be overthrowing everybody. The ball lands halfway in the Decatur end zone, and uh, Jaron was probably a good seven yards behind it. So that's going to bring up a first down for Gardendale as they trot their offense out onto the field. You know, we've got to take advantage of the situations that we have. And after the big play to Jaden Brown, the Decatur, not able to cash it in for any points. And probably 10 more yards are giving Toto a chance of kicking that field goal. But nonetheless, they turn it over on downs. All right. Gardendale is now going from left to right. They are trying to score in Decatur's south end zone. It's going to be a real quick jet sweep over here to this near side. Gives the ball to one of his uh, wideouts as he came in motion across the formation. It's going to pick up two yards on the play. It's going to bring up second down. It's like Adolfo Soto in there on that tackle. But, yeah, they're trying to get it to the outside. But he just the, – the wide receiver just cut it up in the middle and only got about a yard and a half. Second down and eight for Gardendale. The ball is spotted at Gardendale's own 32-yard line. The ball is sitting in the middle of the hash marks. Nelson takes the snap, hands it off. Nope, he keeps it. It's coming over here to the right side. Oh, he has an open field a fl- one time. There's a flag. It's going to be holding on the play. Uh, Nelson is going to break all the way up into Decatur territory, past the 50, give him to the Decatur 45, but everybody hang on. It's going back. Yeah, Gardendale's no holding. Did you see that? I didn't see it, but I see the guy that, that held, and he's not he's not denying it. I think it was number, number 69. Well, it was right out in the open. and uh, Yeah. I was just glad that they saw that. We could see it up here. and I don't know if it was on Kobe Brown or who it was that he was holding. but Low-scoring affair tonight. Uh, Gardendale 3, Decatur 0 with 11 minutes left in the second quarter. Nelson, back at quarterback, two receivers far side, single receiver near side. He has a wing standing to his left. Nelson takes the snap, sprints to the left side going to throw the ball and it's going to be caught looks like it's going to be first down yardage for Gardendale out past the 40 yard line gave him the 42 yard line yes it is first down for the Gardendale Rockets I was hoping that ball skipped mm. off the ground but evidently not I saw ZJ Matthews coming in from underneath I thought he was going to be able to make a play on the ball but uh, I guess I had the wrong, uh, yeah, wrong yeah. vantage point <laughs> 10:38 remaining in the second quarter. Gardendale leads Decatur by a score of three to nothing. Nelson has two receivers far side, single receiver near side. Has Harris standing to his right, fakes the handoff to him, looks to make a pass out here in the right flat, hits his receiver, but it's going to be a minimal pickup, maybe a pickup of about four yards on the play. How about maybe, two, how about uh, two and a half? Maybe, maybe yeah, two and a half on the play. Yeah, looks like Josh Turner's limping a little bit after that play. It's going to be second down and seven for the Gardendale Rockets. The ball is spotted at their own 44-yard line. Chandler Moore comes in for Josh Turner and at that safety position. Near hash mark, single receiver, and bunch to the left. Nelson has a single running back standing to his left, takes the snap, gives him the ball. It's breaking across the middle, gets across the 45-yard line, but – Falls down right at the 47. It's going to bring up a second down or third down and five for the Rockets. I think right now what you want to do is nine minute, nine and a half minutes left. Uh, you want to try to, well, you want to try to keep it as close as possible. Three to nothing right now. Third down and five. Big uh, third down. And it seems like Gardendale has had. Success on third down on a couple of different occasions. Bunch left. Gardendale likes to have a quarterback keeper here. Nope, he's going to look to throw the ball. He's getting a little bit happy feet. Now he's got a little bit of pressure up the middle. He's going to throw the ball over here to the right side. Through the hands of the Gardendale Rocket. Falls incomplete. It's going to bring up a big fourth down. We, we were a little fortunate there. Um, our guys did a good job of covering the their offenders, but uh, their quarterback kept scrambling around, scrambling around. He finally – found an open receiver and Thatch kind of got underneath and if he had come down that fast I'm not so sure who he was throwing it to but uh, his guy was the last one that had a chance to catch it 
Hunter for Gardendale, number 19, Kyle Norris, the long snapper, number 55, Christian Higgins. Good snap. Kick is away. Not a spiral. It's a wobbler, and it's going to land around the 22 and take a big bounce toward the Decatur end zone. It's going to go out of bounds at the 15-yard line. It's going to be first down and 10 for the Decatur Red Raiders at their own 15-yard line. 8.58 remaining in the second quarter. Gardendale leads by a score of three to nothing. It's almost like they didn't give Putt uh, the, the halo rule when he did the uh, fair catch. It's almost like the defenders didn't let him get to the ball. Did I see that right? I was watching the path of the ball. Okay. I, was, I, was just, I didn't see Putt. Well, Webb, you can let me know if I saw that right. All right, Decatur has two receivers far side, single receiver near side with the wing near side. Hand off to Ryan. Ryan's going to push across the 16-yard line. He might get up to the 17-yard line where it's going to bring up second down and long. You know, I know we've got to keep them honest by running the football, but that big Gardendale defensive line, just we're not getting any movement on them. And uh, and Ryan Kirk is just we, two, two and three-yard Carries are not going to take us to first down. Two receivers near side. Jaden Brown is off to the right side. It's a fumbled snap. Ellis picks it up. He's running to his right. Now he's running for his life. Gets back up to the 15-yard line. And how in the world did he pick up yardage on the play? He gets all the way up to the 20-yard line. I'll tell you. That another, running for his life. Is running funny. for his life. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we cannot have the drop snaps or, you know, at least Ellis was able to pick it up and, what he got three or four yards. Well, it's third and four, so it's a big third down for Decatur. The clock goes under eight minutes in the quarter. The ball is lying at Decatur's own 21-yard line. Ellis has Ryan standing to his right, two receivers near side, two receivers far side. Ellis takes the snap, drifting back, looking to throw the ball. He's got to get rid of it because he's under immense pressure. Ryan takes the screen pass, gets past the 25, up to the 30, up to the 40-yard line. First down for the Decatur Red Raiders. Wow, that was a... Ellis Dickman just kind of bluffing his way, r- scrambling around, looking like Fran Tarkington back there. And oh, my. Finally Ooh. finds his, his uh, running back in that little screen. So well, that didn't even look like by design. It just kind of was there in the end. Well, you know, it was like third or fourth. Whatever fourth it is, it gets us to the 40 yard line. Fran so. Tarkington, uh, you dated yourself on that one right there. I love that. All right. Single receiver far side, two receivers near side. Ellis takes a snap and mm. hands it off to Ryan. It's going to be a loss on the play. The ball was lying at the 40-yard line, and now Ryan Kirk is lying at the 42-yard line. Looks like it's going to be a loss of two on the play with seven minutes remaining in the quarter. Gardendale leading by a score well, of three to nothing. defensive lineman, Caden Combs, he's 6'3", 268. 10th grader, is that what I'm seeing? Uh, I believe you're right. A 10th grader. 10th grader. And in on that uh, play, that dude is huge for being Going up against grader. our freshman. All right, two receivers far side, single receiver near side. Ellis takes the snap, looking to throw the ball to the right, and as he throws it, he hits a Gardendale rocket dead square in the chalk. That was him, Caden Combs. So, incomplete pass. It's going to bring up third down and 12. Hey, we're lucky that one. Uh, Caden Combs didn't take that to the house. And uh, I don't know what we were trying to do, but it wasn't a, it was like one of those passes that he's just going to kind of ease it out there. And he about eased it into Caden Combs' hands. Third down and 12 for Decatur. The ball's resting at their own 38 yard line. They need to get the 50 yard line for the first down. Pressure is being shown by Gardendale. They're going to send one linebacker. Ellis is going to roll to his right, looking to throw the ball, and it's through the hands. Looks like number 22, Jiren Daniel, had the ball hit him. It would have been first down yardage and all the way up close to uh, the 40-yard line of the Gardendale Rockets, but it falls to the ground, bringing up fourth down. Yeah, it looked like Jaden McDaniel had it in his hands and uh, just couldn't hold on to it. That was a BB bullet by uh, Ellis Dippin. Well, he had to do it to get it in between – a couple of defenders. And once again, Decatur is going to be penalized here. Too for many men, too on, the many field. men on the field. Mm. Uh, trotting off the field for Decatur will be number 30. That will be uh, Juwan Greer. So, back Decatur up another five yards. This time they're going to be punting from their own 33-yard line. You better believe they're going to be coming for it right here. Yep. Gardendale has 10 men up on the line of scrimmage. They are, And every one of them's coming. It's got to be a quick kick, and it's in a way. It was a good snap, but it's not a good kick. It's going straight up. It's going to be landing at the Gardendale 44-yard line. And so uh, Mac did a good job of getting it out of there, but unfortunately the kick went straight up in the air, 
and it came down over in Gardendale's territory, but right at the 45-yard line. Almost had deja vu of Muscle Shoals right there. 629 remaining in the second quarter. Gardendale leads by a score of three to nothing. Nelson leads his teammates out onto the field. Harris, his running back, is going to take up roost at the right of his quarterback. Single receiver near side, trips to the far side. Nelson looking to throw the ball over here to this side. Now he's going to run to his left. He has he's going to now break and he's going to scramble up the middle, passing the 50 yard line, makes it to the mm. 40, up to the 30. Up to the 25, pushed out of bounds at the 23-yard line. It's just one of those. We had good scramble plays. Yeah, yeah. we had good uh, coverage in the uh, in the back, but you know he, he had nobody throw it to, him, so he had to break free. And yeah, and he went back, back and forth him. in the in the backfield, and uh, the Caters called a timeout. You know, that quarterback's very fluid in his movement, and. Uh, he didn't. He didn't try to rush anything. He ended up letting some some blocks develop to pick up more yards. Yeah, you're end. exactly right. That's you could tell. He was just waiting on some things to open up, and uh, you know that that dynamic. And plus the fact that uh, everybody was spread out, but there's always seemed to be a Gardendale rocket on a Decatur defender blocking, and then and, and so that's just we're we're kind of. We're, we're dragging a little bit. That's why Coach Atkock felt like he needed to take a timeout. It's going to be first down for Gardendale. The ball is spotted at the 25-yard line of Decatur. I don't see Josh Turner. Yeah, Josh Do you Turner see Josh Turner back right in there? No. I don't see him on the being treated or anything. So, No, he's back in there. I see him now. Is that him? No. Or is that That's Z.J. Safety? Matthews? That's Z.J. That's okay. Safety. All right, Nelson, back out onto the field. Pistol formations, got his running back standing to his right. Shotgun, I guess. Two receivers far side, single receiver near side. Takes the snap, looks to his right, wants to throw the ball. He's going to chunk it into the end zone, and he's going to out of out of a receiver out there with a diving catch, but he lands out of bounds. It's going to be – I don't think he held on to the ball. Down. No, he didn't. Did he not? Yeah, Jackson Thatch did a really good job of coverage there, and uh, I think if he would have underthrown it a little bit, Jackson could have had a shot at an interception. Second down and 10 for Gardendale. 607 remaining in the first half. Gardendale leads by a score of three to nothing. Once again, Nelson has Harris standing to his left. It's going to be a quick pitch to him. It's going to be tackled. Yeah, in the back there field. you go. Great tackle by the Decatur Red Raiders. C.J. Matthews comes up and drops him for a loss of one, bringing up third and long with 550 remaining in the half. Big play right there by one of our big time lead senior guys, Z.J. Matthews. I know, Zori, you happy about that? Well, Trey Ayers started it. He he pushed him to the outside, didn't let him turn it back up, and Z.J. came and tripped him up right at the last moment. Third down and 11-12. 11, 12, 11 and a, let's say a long 11 for Gardendale. Nelson takes the snap, wanting to throw the ball, has a wheel route out to his left. It's covered. He's going to roll out here to the right, looking now to throw the ball. Kazir is in pursuit. He's not able to get him, but another couple of Red Raiders step up and bring him down. He's going to be right back at the line of original line of scrimmage. No, I'll give him a couple more yards on top of that. It's going to be fourth down and seven for the Rockets. Chandler Moore ended up making that tackle. 5'10", 145, going against their quarterback. 6'1", 185. All right. Fourth down and seven for Gardendale. You're going to have trips to the left, single receiver near side. No, go ahead. Go ahead. All right. Nelson, watch for the quarterback sneak. Nelson takes the snap, looks to throw the ball, looking to his left. Nobody there. He's throwing it to the end zone, and he has ah. a wide open receiver touchdown. Touchdown for the Gardendale Rockets. How in the world do you let somebody get behind you? I don't know. Well, Jackson Thatch had the coverage, and he just kind of leaked out behind him when Thatch was looking back toward the line of scrimmage. and. Uh, just caught it right in that far corner of the end zone. So, touchdown for Gardendale with 438 remaining in the first half. Snap is a little high, and the kick, though, is good. So, with 438 remaining in the first half, Gardendale takes a 10 to nothing lead over Decatur. Ah, oh, that's tough. 
Yeah, they're talking. Some of the defensive backs are talking amongst themselves, and that's good. But uh, I don't know if it was a mix-up. I don't know. You know, that's alone. that's one of the things that that you 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 trying to struggle in there to hold them to to that three points because you know it's just going to be looks like it's going to be difficult for us to uh, without some big plays and some things happening our way to be able to how we're going to get points on the board and. Yeah, I mean, it, it almost looked like they went to the same passing play that uh, they had just missed mm-hmm. previously. Right. And, and Jackson had it covered the first time, and he had it covered we initially had, there. Yeah, just, just it, let him get yeah. a, a couple of yards beyond him, and that was just enough, and the pass was just thrown just right. So uh, seven points for Gardendale brings it 10 to nothing. And uh, with 438, see what Decatur can do offensively. Kyle Norris for Gardendale has the ball teed up, and the kick is away. And we instantly have a whistle, no kick. Was Looks the like ball be, not ready uh, for play? Offsides again on uh, Gardendale. All right, offside against Gardendale. So they'll have to re-kick, back them up, up to the 35-yard line where Norris will have to kick the ball again. And we'll try again in just a moment. Back deep for Decatur will be number 22, Jiren McDaniels, and number uh, Jiren McDaniel and number 17, Trey Greenwood. 438 remaining in the half. Gardendale leads by a score of 10 to nothing. Have a really nice uh, halftime interview coming up. We do. So that was teaser out there. <laughs> Kicks the ball. It's a low line drive taken in at 20. Thatch is the one that's returning it past the 30, up to the 35, where he's going to be grabbed by a host of – Oh! He rips his helmet off and throws him to the ground. Yeah, it's that, going to be a 15-yard penalty against Gardendale. You know, Jackson Thatch did a really good job of uh, running east and west there, but he never could get north and south. But almost uh, – Looked like he was going to find a crease, but never could. So. Well, you know, and the funny thing about it is there was no reason for that Gardendale rocket to rip the helmet off, and he just he just reached down there and just pulled it right off. And that's going to put Decatur inside their Gardendale Dale territory at the 49. So just what we needed with 428 left, see if we can get on the board. Yeah, Jackson was down at the 36-yard line. 15-yard penalty moves the ball all the way into Gardendale territory. Ellis, in at quarterback, has Dayton Swope standing to his left. Now he tells him, no, you need to stand behind me. Has a single receiver and Jaden Brown to the far side, but he's going to look to throw this side to Duke. The reception is made across the Gardendale 45-yard line, up to the 44, maybe the 43-yard line, where it's going to bring up second down. Well, that's what we hadn't been doing all night on first down, getting that positive yardage there. And, uh, you know, now we have a very manageable second down and uh, – Hopefully we can take it down for a score here. Four minutes remaining in the second quarter. Gardendale leads 10 to nothing. Ellis has two receivers far side, single receiver near side. He's going to hand the ball to Dayton. Dayton has a little bit of running room. Gets out past the 40-yard line. First down. First down yardage as he crosses to the 38-yard line of Gardendale. Good pickup for the Red Raiders. You know, our, our struggle in offense has, has been – keeping their uh, defensive line at bay, but it, we seem to be opening up some holes this drive. Well, maybe run at number 11. That's what we need to do. That time, Dave Swopes did a nice job finding a hole and getting yardage. Ellis is going to mo- change his formation. Two uh, receivers near side and Duke and Waller. Jaden across the middle. It's going to be a handoff once again to Dayton. He's going to be lucky to get back to the line of scrimmage once again. It's going to bring up a second down and Call it a loss of one, second and 11. Well, number 11 came from the backside there <laughs> and made that tackle. Yeah, you know, he so. did. I'll tell you what, that's a big that's a big dude for being a sophomore. And, uh, you know, Dane Swopes is, is just a little feather in his hand and pulled him down. Two receivers far side, two receivers near side. Spread formation with a wing out here to the left. Ellis takes the snap, looking to throw the ball to his right. The mm. connection is just off the fingertips of Waller. It falls to the ground incomplete. It's going to bring up third and long once again for the Red Raiders. You know, the defender got his hand up, and I think Ellis had to alter the way he was throwing it, and it got out of the reach of uh, Jack Waller on that play. All right, let's make, it, let's make a play here, guys. And if we pick we up got two downs yardage, to get it, right? Yeah, if we can pick up some positive yardage here, we can entertain the thought of going forward on fourth down. Ellis takes the snap, looking to throw the ball across the middle. Ah. It's going to be incomplete. Once again, trying to make uh, a connection with uh, uh, 
Jack Waller. It hits in his hands, but the Gardendale defender knocked it out of his hands. Falls to the ground, incomplete, and now it's decision time for the Decatur Red Raiders. Uh, Decatur's leaving the offense out there. I'm not so sure I would punt the ball. It's two, 2.53 left in the half, and see if Decatur's going to maybe try to pull, draw them off sides. 2.53 remaining in the quarter. Gardendale leads 10 to nothing. 13 so, seconds. So close to blocking the punt last time, they've probably got that in their mind. that Maybe Ellis is going to punt it. All right, Ellis is ready for the snap. Has two receivers far side, two receivers near side, trying to draw them offside, and they're not going to bite. So the play clock runs out. It's going to be a a penalty. Nope, a timeout for Decatur. So with 2.53 remaining in the second quarter, Decatur takes their first timeout with Gardendale leading 10 to nothing. These points are going to be difficult to come by. And Decatur, I don't know how many first downs we've had offensively. It hadn't been very many. Very many. You know, we've had two opportunities to to get the ball into their 35-yard line sort of, you know, and uh, just not being able to come up with the, the player, the catch. And, uh, you know, I just hate to give it back to Gardendale with 2.53 left on the clock. The defense is uh, – you know, one of the things I, I was thinking about the defense is we're playing man-to-man, and a lot of times you're man-to-man, you're looking at your guy, and that opens up a lot of lanes for the quarterback to run and – you know, that's it's one of those things. You play zone where you can see more what the – react more to the quarterback. Looks like or, we're going to go for it. 2.53 remaining in the quarter. Decatur's offense takes the field. Currently, the formation that they're showing is trips right with a single receiver and Bo Belcher to the near side. Ellis has Dayton Swope standing to his right. Here they come. Yep, right now they are showing pressure. Are they going to back out of it? Nope, they're going to bring pressure off the corners. And Ellis is now running for his life, looking to throw the ball on downfield. Does chuck the ball. It's yeah. Going to bump. Yes, sir. There you go. Going to be pass interference against Gardendale. First down for the Decatur Red Raiders. Yeah, that was a that Ellis was a making a play, play right there. My goodness, you got to give it up for him. And uh, that defender wasn't looking back at all. And there's a no-brain call for the uh, – yeah, easy for call for the easy call for the official. Ellis took the snap, and there was immediate pressure off the corners from Gardendale, and he kind of had to turn his back and start looking for room to throw the ball. He saw open receiver downfield, threw it, and it was underthrown. But the Gardendale uh, defensive back ran into who was that? Was that Jaden? That was Ryan Kirk, I believe. Oh, was it there. Ryan anyway? So it's going to be right? first down for Decatur. I think the so. ball, the ball is spotted at Gardendale's twenty-four yard line. Ellis takes the snap. He's going to throw to Jaden Brown over in the right side. It's yeah! Yeah! Oh, touchdown! Touchdown! touchdown <laughs> for Decatur Woo! once again. Jaden Brown sticks one hand up, brings in the catch. Touchdown for the Decatur Red Raiders. Yeah, Jaden was calling for the ball, and uh, oh, he's looking at something. As he's coming off the field, and uh, he's saying it doesn't matter. I can uh, have a, I can have a club saying. hand. And, okay, that's what he's yeah, saying. He's okay. Yeah, that was I'm a beautiful that, throw, yeah. beautiful catch. Trey airs him for the snap. Kick is up, and the kick is yeah. good. He snuck it inside the left upright. So your new score with two thirty-eight remaining in the second quarter. You're Decatur High School Red Raiders, 7, and Gardendale, 10. Well, we hung in there and uh, made that hard fourth down uh, call. And <laughs> yeah, we did. You, and, you uh, wanted to punt it, John. And, uh, well, it, I, you, you know, know, yeah, it was uh, – they bailed us out. And, and it was a it was a good uh, interference call. I don't think anybody would uh, oh, no disagree question. with that. And, but, but, you know, Ellis Dickman, again, he makes the – he creates that opportunity think, with his legs. I think what we want to do is we, we want to be close. We want to be close and, and – uh, you know, you don't want to get down two scores. You don't want to get down three scores. And, you know, that was just a big, big uh, play uh, by Decatur. Now you got 238. It swings back to the defense. And, uh, you know, it's it's hold them. It's, you know, do what you got to do, but uh, either get the ball back or burn this 238 off the clock with no more points. Back deep to receive for Gardendale will be – uh, number two, Jay, uh, Jaden Arrington, and number six, Jonathan Harris. It's going to be a kick out of bounds. No, he's going to pick it up before it rolls out of bounds. Going to pick it, take it up to the left. It's going to get across the 15-yard line, up to the 20. Oh, oh he's no! Tackle all the way across the 30-yard line, up to the 35. 
Brought Woo! down by a host of Decatur Red Raiders at the 44-yard line. I don't know how we didn't take what it a, down, but, yeah. It's, what uh, a play by number 14, Caden McGruder for Gardendale. No, that's not what we want. That's, that's, that's not what we needed. No. And, We'd have been better off with that ball going out of bounds. Yes, I mean, definitely. Ball he was, ran from one side of the field to the other. Ball right. was going to roll out of bounds somewhere inside the 10-yard line. Picked it up, and Magruder runs it all the way, 50 yards across the field to pick up all the way to the 44-yard line for Gardendale. All right, Nelson in at quarterback. He has Harris in the backfield with him. Single receiver far side, single receiver near side. It's going to give off to Harris, sprinting over here to the right side. It's going to outrun some Decatur Red Raiders, making his way past the 50-yard line. It's going to be indicator territory, second down and probably three for the Rockets. Chandler Moore had a great opportunity to make a, a good play, and um, he just over-pursued, and uh, he kind of whiffed on it. So Trips right for Gardendale. Nelson has Harris standing to his left. Single receiver near side. Takes the snap, looking to throw the ball. Looking to his left, throwing deep. He has a step on the Decatur defender. Good. Through his hands and falls incomplete. Back deep for Decatur was number seven, ZJ Matthews. He had the coverage on number 16, Justin Nelson. No, yeah, he just he dropped it. I he mean, did. He, he had it. Well, yeah. ZJ did a good job of catching up to the, the receiver, and I think he might have got a hand in at the last minute. Guys, here's one of the biggest plays probably so far for one of the biggest plays of the night for Decatur. It's third down and three for Gardendale with a minute 48 remaining in the half. You got to need to stop them here. Don't need to get let them get any more of the uh, uh, old Mo back. All right. Gardendale has a tight formation. Nelson takes the snap, throws no. the ball, and incomplete. Once again, he tried to hit his back out of the backfield. Jonathan Harris over here on the right side. Through his hands, falls incomplete. Yes, and they could bring it on down. the punt team. <laughs> well, that was a gift for us because he he was wide open for I'll that tell you first what, down. And it, uh, I'm hoping somebody down there is telling Adolfo Soto and those guys up do front. Do not jump do off not jump with Kobe Brown. I think Myron is doing that right now. He just walked to the middle of the Decatur defensive line and told them to back up a yard, and they well, did just hold that. On now. They're, they're, Timeout, Decatur. Gardner They're talking be, about they, that. They might be thinking, hey, what are we going to do? Uh, are they going to fake it? Timeout, No, Decatur. I think they're going to bring the offense back out on the field. Timeout, uh, timeout for Gardendale with a minute 44 remaining in the second quarter. Decatur trails Gardendale by a score of 7-10. to 10. You know, I'm thinking this, uh, the video of us calling the game is kind of like Peyton Manning and Eli Manning on Monday Night Football. Have you watched that before? I have. No, so I they, have. they're sitting there watching the game at their home. And then, uh, I've seen. I don't know, no. fans, how do y'all like that? Are no, we? That sucks. I bet they hate it. They hate it. <laughs> <laughs> they don't like seeing our ugly mug, huh? Uh-uh. Well, you want me to turn it, turn it on the field or? or no, uh, you can't do that. I know I can't. I just want to get a rise out of Nick. Let's see what they're bringing back out. Looks like the punt team is coming back out. All right, so let's reset everything. The ball is spotted on the Decatur side at the 49-yard line near hash mark. Let's look and see what uh, – Could they, be a fake. Could be a fake. They have a wide out oh on either goodness, side. Don't, don't get back too far, guys. The snap is good, and there is a kick. It's going to be a long, low kick. But Webster doesn't want anything to do with it. It bounces at the 15, rolls all the way inside the five-yard line, all the way down to the three-yard line, four-yard line of Decatur. So it will be first down for Decatur with a minute 32 remaining in the second quarter. Decatur's ball inside their own five-yard line. And how, how Gordon has two timeouts left. Okay. Yeah. I don't know. I would think we, we'd be – Okay with taking the knee and getting the second uh, half kickoff. Uh, we can't do it with them with two timeouts. Yeah, with so. Maybe a quarterback yeah, keeper again, right here. We had too many we, people on the field. We need to try to pick up a first down here. Ellis is standing in his own end zone. He's going to hand the ball off to Ron. Nope, Swopes. And he's going to be gang tackled Woo. at the one-yard line. No. I mean, absolutely nowhere for Dayton to run as he was given the ball. Timeout for Gardendale. Wait a minute. That will – Number 11 was wanting a safety there, but that, that no, was not even close. No, that was nowhere close. I think that's their last timeout. I think that that's their last timeout for the half. Yeah, yeah that's, that's what, their last timeout. So, with a minute 21 remaining in the second quarter, uh, Gardendale has taken their last timeout. The ball is spotted at the two-yard line. 
but uh, it's when I wish we could be under center uh, and uh, just get a little quarterback keeper. Well, they're when they want to put pressure on us, like they just coming in like gangbusters. Yeah, I mean, uh, every, lots of free guys running through, and you know, you think, well, did we put it up in the air? And uh, you know, <laughs> the 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 difference between Ellis Dickman has to do. And, and getting rid of the ball and dodging people and then what their quarterback can stand back there all day long <laughs> and just have lunch and, and see everybody and, you know, have all that time. But uh, Decatur, you know, it's a minute and 21 left. You know, I'm not necessarily sure what Coach Adcock and his staff is going to dial up, but the ball is spotted at the two-yard line, maybe the one-and-a-half-yard line. Ellis has Ryan Kirk now standing to his left. Ellis takes the snap, wanting to throw the ball, and he's going to chunk it out here to the left side, and he's going to overthrow everybody. Man, we're going to have, a, to, gonna have a holding Trying call. to make a connection with Trey Greenwell, but it fell incomplete. But as John says, we do have a penalty flag on the play. I think they're going to call him holding. I don't – on on number holding on yeah. number twenty one, yeah, you're defensive right. back, and it looks like that's where that what's going to have. Huge play, huge penalty there for Gardendale. Huge play for the Decatur Red Raiders. It is going to be a holding call against Gardendale. Brings the ball out past the fifteen yard line at the sixteen. First down for Decatur. Ellis takes the snap, hands it off to. Uh, Ryan Kirk, and once again, there's a host of uh, Gardendale Rockets there to drag him down. It's going to be a loss of one on the play. It's just like somebody's opened the floodgates, and there's a wave of white coming in towards well, the uh, Red Raider the running back. The first dude that hit him was who? Our guy. Braden Duper. Yeah. I mean, I think he got knocked back in the backfield. It's going to be second down and 12 for Decatur. The ball is at their own 15-yard line. Ellis takes the snap, fakes the handoff, looking to throw no, the no, ball. No, 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 no. It's going to be out of bounds. So, 35 seconds remaining in we're the doing second that. Yeah, quarter. I think he, he just take a knee right here. Yeah, I think we just take a knee. Going after Kevin Duke, but he threw it out of bounds. Jackson Thatch made a nice nice uh, play on the sidelines, but he was <laughs> – The last thing the we wanted to do is punt down here. So, well, third – you're correct. Third down and 12 for Decatur. The ball is spotted at the 15-yard line. Can't take a knee here and run out the half. They elect to hand off to Ryan. Ryan breaks past the 20, picks Back. up first down yardage as he crosses the 30-yard line. A good run for Ryan Kirk as he once again hits the deck. I well, couldn't Decatur, see what happened. Decatur's got a couple of timeouts, I guess. Uh, let it run out here. Decatur is going to run up, and they're going to get a real quick snap off. Ellis takes the snap, drops the snap. Now he looks to run the ball, gets across the 30, gets up to the 33-yard line. And before there's a mess up, let's just go ahead and – Well, I tell you, it's been – there's about three snaps we've had that he's put on the deck. And well, Decatur calls Decatur timeout. Calls there's timeout. 16.8 seconds left. and It's almost like some of those snaps are coming in a little low and, and uh, Ellis is having to squat down to catch uh, the ball and uh, – He's missing on some, so. It's going to be second down and eight for Decatur. The ball is spotted at their own 33-yard line at Wyatt the far Smith. hash mark. Wyatt Smith on the sidelines looks like he's got a left arm problem. It's getting a little chilly tonight, isn't it, guys? That's why that I put on the sweatshirt. Front, cold front's about to move through. Beautiful evening here at Ogle Stadium. The sun in, or the sun, the sun, I guess I could say the sun has set, but the moon has rose up over the horizon and we can see it over Decatur High School. Not quite a full moon. Beautiful evening for football. I can remember our trip to Clay Chalkful last year. We were freezing. Y'all remember yes, that night? It I was do. cold that night. Nice, comfortable uh, conditions here at Ogle Stadium. I'm in shorts and a sweatshirt. John is even wearing shorts. Wow. You all right? Fashion, baby. Fashion. <laughs> okay. Would Amy agree with that? No. <laughs> Decatur takes to the field. Ellis has an empty backfield. And once again, it's Go a fumble yeah. snap. And he goes ahead, turns around, makes the catch off the snap, falls down, avoids the hit, and says, I think we're just going to let this run out. And that Coach Adcock agrees with him. It's 
Now, five, four, three, two, one, and that is the end of your first half with the Gardendale Rockets leading Decatur by a score of 10 to 7. Looks like Ellis Digman, too, as I'm looking up there. Is oh, he's flexing that hand. Yeah, he's, he's talking to Coach Adcock. But, yeah, I, I, you know, you keep it close. Uh, a half is down. You're down by three. You know, I think you'd like to be up, but uh, Decatur does get that – get that uh, – Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, 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 no. Yeah, no. we're live. Uh-uh. Yeah. <laughs> Come on in right there. Did you get my Go list of way. questions, Coach? No. You didn't get my list of questions? What do you think we're no. going to hit you with today? I huh? have no idea. You, what are you prepared for? What? Well, well you oh, better just tell me when we go oh, live. We're, we're, <laughs> we're live. live. Hey, 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 everybody right there. Y'all know who this is. The, is that, Lee Cagle. Knows. It's, it's the third. Coach Cagle. Hey, hey uh, are we really live? We're we live. are live. Yes, okay, yeah, we're, yes live. we're off. We're, we're live. <laughs> Coach Cagle coming back and watch the old Red Raider. You can't take the Red Raider out of you, right? Never. 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 That's what, that's what I thought. It's red and black all the time. Right? <laughs> Well, tell us a little bit about what you're doing, and, and you're, are doing? you officially retired? Here, look. Uh, since, since we got live, okay. This this is my wife Betsy. She has I'm sorry. taught I'm me. Sorry. She has taught me how to read. Oh yeah, read. I am reading, man. I, Malcolm Gladwell is my favorite author. What are you learning? Oh, yeah, I'm man. I'm learning. <laughs> I can't tell you what I'm learning. My reading comprehension is poor. <laughs> Mine too, but, coach. <laughs> but I tell you what. But I, I will tell you this. I'm 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 back in the Bible more. Well, than good I was because she's taught me how to read. So I will say that kind of knocked him in the head a few times. It well, takes good. me back to our FCA days back in 1994, huh? I don't. I can't even think back that far. <laughs> well, so are you through coaching? Out? Done? One hundred percent. Well, tell us about when, when you left here, when you retired here, you went to Madison Academy. Went to Madison Academy. For how right. long? How two long? years. Two, two years. years. I was a defensive so, back coach there. How yeah. how was that compared to Decatur? Um, you know what? It was like the early days here at Decatur. Yeah? It really was. Well, Coach Godsey um, was there, and coach he's head coach. Right. And, and, and then one year later. Rod, Rod Lovett it comes over there. Yeah. Right, right. So, uh. You know, the, the, the athletes and the way they listen to you and the way they performed. And I'm not saying it's, you know, that's not the way it is at Decatur now. Right, I'm right. I'm just saying it reminded me of the early days, yeah. the early players, you know. Yeah. Um, you know, I guess our biggest challenge there, not that you asked me what our challenge was, well, is the guys are from everywhere. They may be from 40 miles away, so there's no community, okay? Yeah. But it, it, it grew into one, you know, right. you know. Kids well, I think once you and, have success, which I guess y'all y'all had a lot of success when you were there. I don't know. Are, are they in the play? I don't think they're, yes. in, the, they're yeah, in the playoffs. Yeah, the yeah they play uh, Sylvania. My right. my nephew's gone there. Brooks' son, uh, Judson Collins, is playing there this year. And at Madison Academy? Madison Academy. See, yeah. I hate that. I hate – you know what? I left a year too early yeah. to coach Brooks, <laughs> his yeah. son, who transferred yeah. over there from Hartsville, I guess. Right? How many generational – uh, kids, did you ever coach their? You coached their dad, and then you coached your son. Did you? What do you mean? How many generations? Man? No, you I'm act sa- like I'm a hundred years old. No, but what I'm saying is, how many dads <laughs> did Look, you coach? One, one generation, the dad, and then the son. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Now, yeah. What I'm saying is, how many of those oh, kids? How many of those? Yeah. Okay, you got to clarify, man. Well, um, I thought I did, but uh, you didn't listen. <laughs> that re- that my listen, my comprehension. reading comprehension yeah. and listening comprehension yeah. is not very good. Yes. Um, you, you know any, what? I, any I ring just a bell? can't. I can't. Yeah. I can't well, I mean, that I, I've always one, thought that's one, pretty one neat. Yeah, yeah. Because you know, if I, I don't know, you think Atkins got a few more years in him? You hadn't talked to him about his longevity. Well, matter of fact, after they won Friday night, Betsy yeah. and I came over Saturday morning, yeah. bought him some donuts. Yeah. And came over Saturday morning, and told him we'd be here at the game. He said, "Do not let me know you're going to be at this game because I'm the jinx if, if something <laughs> go right." So I don't want to be that guy, but um, yeah, he's got energy left still. He's excited. Oh, yeah. He loves oh, it. Yeah. You know, I love what I'm what I'm seeing. The program is today versus, you know, five. We had some tough years. I mean, and toward the end of your tenure here, I mean, that's. Um, but getting Decatur back to 
to where we are used to being. I yep. mean, what, what do you think that means to Coach Adcock and, uh, and, and the rest of the guys down there? Look, I, all I know is I don't know how many years left he has, and mm-hmm. I don't know if this is his last year because we had not talked about it. But I'm telling you, what he's doing right now, this is – what's going on right now is old school Decatur That's High School right. football. It is 10-7 to 7 at halftime, and these guys are fighting. That's Man. Decatur football. Hey, did you see? And, and obviously – when you look at Gardendale over there, they got some, they have some beasts. The lines yeah. of scrimmages are so different oh. between what they have and what we have, and and we've held them out of the end zone on two times inside hey. the ten ten yard line. Hey. I mean, I, I don't know how they did that. I don't the know guys how they did from that. Decatur play with heart. Man. Did you see the Trey Ayers the first first time he he ran down forty yards and got the guy on the five yard line that. Then Josh Turner ran down and 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 got him on the five yeah, yard. Yeah, if he hadn't got him on the two yard, it could have been they, fourteen they did, nothing yeah. instead of three to nothing. And right. you know it's a different game. Yeah, yeah. So that's effort. effort. Relentless effort. Effort. So, what well, what about all these other guys? How about Coach Morrison? Have you talked to him? He's well, has he tried to get tonight, you out of right? retirement? Okay, well let, let me go ahead and tell you. <laughs> let me tell you what I am now. Yeah, I'm a Austin band parent. Oh yeah. <laughs> My, yeah, you know, we saw we saw you at the Austin game on yes. the Austin side. So, you wouldn't come talk to us then. Why? Because he's an you, Austin band fan. Uh. Because, <laughs> I, yeah, that's right. I've got my stepson plays trumpet, <laughs> and he's on the 50-yard line playing, so I've got to watch him. Um, <laughs> Absolutely. Anyway. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so what was the question? <laughs> I don't even remember. I don't either. <laughs> Well, listen, I, I appreciate you reaching out to me earlier this week and, and after you found out you were going to be up here interviewing with us. But uh, right. this is kind of a new thing. We're going to start doing this more often. I appreciate your willingness to come up here. And what does it mean to, to be back here at Decatur? I mean, when you walk through, it's it's kind of odd you not being on that sideline after it's, you did um, it for how many years? Wow, 29. 29. Yeah. yeah. Um, you came in 19... 91. 91. 90, yeah, 91, yeah. 91, 91, yeah. <laughs> she was in high school at Vestavia when I was here. Yeah. Anyway, anyway. But what does it mean to um, you to see the D and come back and see us having success? You know what? I, I I will be honest. I know my days of coaching are over. I don't wish to be down there at all. I really don't. That's a um, good feeling. It is a good feeling. It's a feeling. good feeling. You know, yeah. that I know that yeah. I'm where I'm supposed to be. I know where I'm supposed to be with Betsy. And um Woo! Yeah, I understand. I understand. I'm about to tear up because you know what? This place really is special. I spent a career here. Yeah. I yeah. retired here. Yeah. You know what I mean? So yeah. uh, it's good to see these guys fight. Yeah. You know, it's um, from up here, you don't know if it's 1991 or 2022. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's the same uniform, the same helmet, the same effort, and the crowd, and I mean, it's a great crowd tonight. They've got a great crowd. This is second round playoff, man. It's awesome. Well, yeah. we, we talk about, you know, the longevity of Decatur and the history of the coaches. I mean, the coaching tree you came out of. I mean, I was part of the early years of, of when you were here. But, uh, I mean, the, the rock star coaching crew we had when I was here, uh, you know, of course, wow. we had Creasy. Went on to uh, Athens, had Gotsy, went on to what Brooks, Brooks. went on to Hartzell, right. went on to uh, Madison now Academy. Madison Academy. Then we had Adcock as an assistant, also. I right. mean, Rivers, of course, what he did. And, and, uh, I mean, Lee Cagle, I mean, and there you, I was. Yeah, I was the least of these. <laughs> no, uh, I wouldn't yeah. say that at all. But, well. uh, I mean, that, that's when you talk to Coach Adcock and want to hit, you know, you, you ask him what his favorite coaching and he talks about that staff that we had then and uh i can't believe it's been 30 years but uh here right. we are talking about it man i can't either you know what it was an honor you know coach rivers is the one that hired me here and i'm, I'm forever thankful that he did and you know what it was great coaching with him he was an awesome Do you, you stay in touch coach. with coach rivers at all periodically yeah. periodically is he um, the pool boy down for philip down in uh he was his pool. He met me at uh, Home Depot one day and said his new job. He was in retirement. He was the pool boy at Phillips <laughs> House down on the beach. So. Yeah, and he cleans windows too. From what I hear. So anyway, <laughs> so, yeah. You think but, Coach uh, Rivers listen to us tonight? Probably I, not. I hope he is. Yeah, Coach I hope. Rivers. I want to let you know I love you and I appreciate you. Yeah. If you're listening, and if somebody else is listening, you talk to him. Tell him I said it. 
Well, the cool thing about this YouTube is you can go back and listen to it forever. Listen. Well, you think Coach Rivers knows how to get on YouTube? No. <laughs> no. Well, you know, I, I, I will say no this. Can I. I will say this, too, is in this is kind of an example. So, see, Coach Rivers, for me, he was my position coach. Wow. So, you know, with Coach Webb and Coach Rivers and Coach Grammer, you know, they would always have a blonde – out in the parking lot waiting for them to get, get off of practice. <laughs> and and it was just and it, it was just the way it was. They were just young coaches, you know, just starting out. And uh how each one of us have yeah. a have different have a different different relationship at a different time. Yeah. But it's all the one thing that's that's that has the thread between us is Decatur High School. Oh. And you know, and I think that David Elwell, uh, who writes for the Daily, he had a quote in one of his one of his articles, and, and I, I can't, I probably will not get it exactly right, but it said that, you know, football's better when Decatur's better. When Decatur's good, it just makes it that much more special, and you know, and I think that's a lot. There's there's certain programs that you that you know that 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 in college, you know, it's good when Alabama's good, it's good when Texas is good. You know, in the pros, it's good when when I you know I, yeah I almost say Auburn too, but it, it's good when the Steelers are good, when the Cowboys are good, and it's good when the Red Raiders are good. Well, let me tell you something. That, you know what's true about that Decatur D right out there in the middle and on your hat? People do recognize that D all over the state. Yeah, they know that D. Yeah, you know, and it does stand for something. I mean, you know, it's the Decatur Red Raiders, Decatur, well, Alabama. Stands for toughness, you know. To talk about a hundred years and having five head coaches, I mean that. I don't know if you can go anywhere in the state and find where that that's happened, you know. Uh, Not many. Maybe Best Davy Hills, because that guy, what was his name? The head coach, Buddy Anderson. Buddy Anderson, he yeah. coached forever. He. Would you he, know? I, I will say this about Coach Atcock and I are, are kind of in the same position. The fact that he's an old coach with a bunch of young, real young assistants under him right. just like i am an old guy with a with a freshman <laughs> with a freshman football player there you go so it's uh, coach Ad, how long does coach adcock have let's see max has got sophomore junior senior three years he's got three more years <laughs> he's got a coach after that it's team. done he's, he's he, done yeah uh you know we talk about um the the legacy that that the coaches have and and that you had. I mean, I, I want to say this for you and your longevity here. I mean, you you meant a lot to me early on Thank in, you for in, saying. in in my uh, development. Uh, I don't know what a, if I was a good football player or not, but I worked hard. I know that. And Hold up, we had y'all were. <laughs> if I remember correctly, y'all yeah. did not allow a touchdown in regular season on this field all season. You're right. Till the Walker Vikings That's showed right. in. And they had a stud right. and running back. Adam Cox. Yeah. That finally punched one yeah. in. And that stands on the visitor side erupted because they knew nobody had scored. Yeah. And they wondered could they score. That must score. not have been the two and two and nine season. We were two and eight that oh. year before. That was a tough, was tough nice. year, wasn't it, Lee? Yes. Uh, <laughs> but hey, we went from quarterfinals. You remember the undefeated season ninety three right. and you know had Willie Pointer, um, Antonio Lankford in the right. backfield. I, I told the story last week about when Coach Greasy started crying on the sidelines when Willie Porner came down and broke his ankle. Right, you remember that? Right. I remember about the 40 yard line. That's right. right here, yeah. That's right. And, uh, and then we, we go on and I, we talked about guys. You remember opponents that you remember Dawood Rashid, Tito Smith, those guys from Shades Valley. I remember I had to play, uh, Dawood Rashid and, and the scout offense that whole week, man, I got, I got pounded by Mark 20. You all those guys. Something that, funny about yeah, Rashid. Yeah. He was a great linebacker. Yeah. He was too fast. Yeah. He's Even at Alabama, everything. he was too fast. Yeah. He'd overrun everything because he was too stinking fast. Yeah. It's crazy. Kind of like but anyway, keep telling your story. Well, but, it, but anyway, we go from uh, what, we're 10 and 10 and no, 13, 12 and 1. Right. We ended 12 and 1. Right. Uh, that The coolest thing about that year was we were undefeated with Austin. We come in 9 and 9 and 0, oh, both teams, and on Ogle. At Ogle Stadium, that was a cool, yeah. cool memory. Uh, and then we go to the two and eight season. You always like to talk about, but what I get to talk about my is in my senior five. year. You're five and five senior. Okay. In my senior year, right. we were nine and two against Adam Cox. Right. We all. <laughs> <laughs> hey, any parting shots? 
I don't know if I have a parting shot or not. You know what? I appreciate you guys. Thank you for letting me come up here. Well, listen, I, I wanted to tell you, you Thursday, th- Thursday mornings at 7.30 or 6.30, you need to come up. Thursday morning? I got a book for you. Do you have a book? Yeah. Who's the author? It's a, it's our Bible study. Oh, okay. So y'all doing it Thursday? Yeah. Now. Yeah. I should start coming. Do we need you to come? Yeah. I need to do that. I need to do that. Well, I you know, you meant a lot to Decatur High School, and, uh, and I'm – I've always, when I looked at you guys being over at Madison Academy, I thought to myself, first of all, the people at Madison Academy are very fortunate to have you guys, even Coach Godsey. Yes. Coming from this, from that tree of coaches, Coach Webb and Coach Ogle and Coach Rivers. And, you know, it's just anywhere it seems like Decatur guys goes, the, the program that where they are, they benefit from. Them. And I appreciate you know the work what? that y'all yes. done. I appreciate it. Well, appreciate you talk it. about – we talk about the length of time it's been, but you're the most well-preserved guy I know, man. You, you, you – look at you. You hadn't changed in 30 years, man. Well, I appreciate is it. That, is that bet Hard to work. influence on you or what? Hey. <laughs> like fine wine. You get older with yeah, – you that, get finer with age. Must be the Brussels fries. <laughs> <laughs> well, Coach – Hey, good to see I you. I love y'all, man. Love I you, do. brother. I appreciate it. Thank you, man. I appreciate good it. Seeing you. Hey, go Red Raiders. Yeah, buddy. Hey, uh, ten to seven game right here. I will tell you what. What's the key to the second half? Key to the second half. What are they telling them in halftime right now? What are they telling the yeah. Cater guys? Yeah. What are we, What are we talking about at halftime? Hey, they're an undisciplined football team. Yeah. yeah. Very good, but they're undisciplined. A lot of fifteen yard penalties. Yeah. Don't a lot of offside. Give up. Yeah. Just keep plugging because yeah. I'm telling you, if you keep firing away, just, just like I, t- I told I told Betsy right before the half, I said that 15 yard penalty on that kickoff return is going to cost Gardner a touchdown. Yeah, it's 10 to seven. They just keep on plugging, keep playing defense. You know, uh, don't let a guy slip behind you. Get on top of those receivers. You know, don't let a guy slip. Well, let that quarterback drop one in. They'll be fine. We're in it. That's yeah. all I can ask for That's right all now. You can ask for. Thank you, Coach. They're staring at the third round. I know it. I know yeah. it. Let's go All get them. Right. All right. Are you going Appreciate to Muscle it. Shoals next week when we go? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Coach. Appreciate it. All right. Thank you to uh, Coach Kegel for coming up and visiting with us at halftime. Your halftime score is Gardendale leads Decatur by a score of 10 to 7. Uh, Decatur High School Band is still out on the field right now playing through their halftime. There's uh, three minutes remaining on the clock. We still have warm-ups to go through on the sideline. A couple of real quick shout-outs that I'd like to say real quick. Thank you. Appreciate it, bud. I uh, want to say hello to Coach Justin Moore of the Decatur uh, Lady Red Raiders basketball team. Uh, they played today against Grissom. The uh, JV girls beat Grissom, uh, and, but the varsity girls lost by a score of 44-39. Uh, he said that they're playing uh, – the varsity is playing really well, and they're playing uh, hard and exciting, electric, he said, basketball. So I'd like to encourage everybody to go out and uh, – um, uh, watch our girls and our guys play basketball as we start to enter into basketball season. Guys also had a shout out from uh, uh, Tanner Burns. Tanner Burns is uh, re- uh, listening in. New, uh, recently married Tanner Burns. Oh, Tanner. Uh, he's listening in to us tonight. He said hello. and uh, Let's uh, go fishing, Tanner. You ready? So I would say hello as Coach Stevenson walks in behind us here. Uh, wanted to say also thank you to uh, Miss Belcher listening at home. She has sent us a text and said, "Hey, do y'all know the cameras on y'all?" <laughs> That's a, sorry, Miss Belcher. I, I you was she disappointed. She was disappointed. Oh I, man, I, I think that she she was greatly disappointed. But well, why why you say that? Let's just once again go over for the folks that that maybe don't know. But the uh, when you get into the playoffs, the the state kind of takes over on what you can and what you can't do. And one of the things that the, the uh, Alabama High School Athletic Association has a, has a deal with uh, National Federation to High School, NFHS, and they do some broadcast things. And uh, 
Uh, and what they do is they say in the playoffs, we're going to limit the, the only people that can do live football is uh, the NF, NFHS systems. And we are on YouTube, which is a different system. So they um, they won't allow us to, to video it. And, in fact, I'm hoping that we're okay just videoing this. So last week we were – put a piece of tape over the, the lens and, you know, everybody, no, nobody could see anything. So we thought, well, maybe the, a, a better thing to do is, is at least you guys can look at us and, and know see our way, reaction. You know, and, maybe, maybe, maybe mm-hmm. it depends on y'all might say, no, I'd rather see the back end of a tape piece of tape. But, <laughs> um, but anyway, that's why you're looking at us. If you tune in, you know, this is kind of like uh, saying the score. Everybody complains about it. We don't say the score. Well, we don't say the score. We say it, but it's right before you come back on. And uh, so we wanted to, to say that again. That's why you're looking at us and, and not anything on the field. But as the uh, time ticks off the clock, and I guess they're going to put some more time on both the teams are yeah, coming we have, back on the field. We still looks have like, the warm-up time to go through. Looks like Josh Turner's back on the sideline, so maybe – we're going to see him in action. Real quick PSA half. here from uh, the Alabama High School Athletic Association. Win, lose, win or lose, the name of the game is sportsmanship in our education-based high school athletics. The lesson learned on the court and on the field bleacher, or in the bleachers is good sports are winners no matter what the score. Support high school athletics with good sportsmanship. All right. So two minutes and 30 seconds remaining in the warm-up period. Both teams have made their way out onto the field. Decatur has made it to their sideline. Gardendale is still warming up in the end zone. I want to say also hello to my wife, who's probably sitting at home wrapped in that afghan with the dog in her lap listening in. Love you, Michelle. Love you, Emma. Appreciate you. Glad you're on the mend. <laughs> they're, they're slowly getting better, slowly but surely. Well, guys, I, I don't think that um... – you know, we, we we could we could ask to be ahead, but you know, right now the the ball game is is two quarters. We've cut it in half, and you know, you look out there and you you, you look across at Gardendale. I think I think Coach Cagle was uh, very perceptive in the fact that these guys don't play as hard as we play, and I don't think they have to play as hard as we play. And you know, the the thing is, we we from an athletic standpoint, if you if you just line everybody up well it's it's not even close to what the athleticism is difference between their team and our team and but you know right now it's just our guys are out there fighting and scratching and doing everything they can and and you know this is this is what we need to do so we need to, to to let the game get the closer it is to the end and be within striking distance and that's when our confidence goes up they start become a little shaky on, oh my God, we're you know, we're 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 about to lose to these guys. That's what we need to do: play good, solid football. Don't turn the ball over. Limit your, you know, don't have any penalties, and uh, see what we can get in the fourth quarter. Well, and the good news is we get the kickoff coming out in the second half. And listen, you talk about let it, let it be close. Our guys, you stand assured that they are going to fight to the end, and uh, there will be no give up in them and uh i i feel a 10 to 7 game is is a, a victory at this point like i said we we had a couple instances that could have got away from us if, oh, we, no. if we don't make the uh if we don't get give the, me a halftime, uh, halftime sponsor, sponsor? Okay. yeah we're half is that my sponsor. buddy it's, it's, uh, it's the end Dement. of it yeah you need to you get know, going he, he clarified to me that uh he's the only banking sponsor we got this year so oh. uh let me i'll yeah Local banking expertise, the newest innovations in technology, personal attention, unexpected hospitality is all part of the River Bank and Trust difference. We invite you to experience it for yourself. Call Ashton Demand at 256-957-7013 or go see the folks at River Bank and Trust at their downtown Decatur location. Go Red Raiders. Kyle Norris back deep for Gardendale. We are underway in the second half. End over end kick down to Trey Greenwell. Takes it past the 10. Out to the 20, up to the 25, burst of speed, up to the 30, gathered in by the Gardendale Rockets. They put him on the ground somewhere around the 34-yard line where it will be first down for Decatur Red Raiders. 
Yeah, nice, nice run by Trey Greenwell up the middle. Trey did a good job hitting the hole hard, and I, I, I got to tell you, it looks like we we got an opportunity to take one to the house if we can, uh, if we can hit that seam. All right, to begin your second half, it looks like that Ellis is going to have Ryan Kirk standing to his right. Decatur has two receivers to the far side, single receiver near side with a wing standing to Ellis's left. It's going to be a handoff to Ryan. Ryan trying to prod through that left side. He's going to pick up maybe a half yard, a yard on the play, springing up. No, give him two yards, yard and a half. It's going to bring up second down. Well, you know, one of the things is that, that we get – pass the line of scrimmage, but we're not getting anybody back on those linebackers, and they're just able to come in and scrape off and make the tackle after a couple of yards. Need to get back to that second level. I'm just noticing, why is Ryan six and not three? That I do not know. Once again, Ryan takes a handoff. He's going off to the right side, breaks through, but gets up to the 40-yard line. Close to first down for Ryan Kirk. Are they going to get – yes, they're going to give him the first down. And it's going to be up close to the 44-yard line. Good play for Decatur. That's a really good sign for Decatur offense if we can establish this run because it's going to open up Ellis uh, on the on the pass. Ball is spotted at the far hash mark at the 44-yard line. As you listen, Decatur is driving from right to left. First down for Decatur. Ellis takes the snap. Once again, hands it off to Ryan. He's going to go nowhere this time. He's going to be stacked up over on the right side. Going to be lucky to get back to the line of scrimmage, second and long. Yeah, going to that short side of the field and uh, just a lot of a lot of white jerseys over on that side and uh, just didn't get any push and no no gain on first down. Ten minutes and 40 seconds remaining in the third quarter. Gardendale leads by a score of 10 to 7. Ellis in the pistol formation. Now he moves uh, Kirk over to the left side, and he's going to now shift uh, Waller and Duper over to the right side of the formation. He's barking out orders because he doesn't like something or he sees something. He's making a check at the line of scrimmage. Ellis takes the snap. He gives the ball to Ryan, and he's going to be dumped in the backfield once again. Number 17 for Gardendale. Uh, the Kelly Florida Collins, Gator. Yeah, comes <laughs> flashing around the right side, defensive right side, gathers him in in the backfield for a loss on the play. I'm not sure that he's even that we even try to block him because he's on the opposite side of the play. and uh, We didn't. Just makes his way just – Lots of speed, lots of size, and got that gator chopper going. 9.50 remaining in the third quarter. Gardendale leads 10-7. to seven. Ellis has nobody in the backfield with him. Two receivers far side, two receivers near side with an H over here to the left side. Third down and 12. Takes the snap, drops back behind to his 32-yard line. He's going to sprint out to the right side. Goes past the 45 up to the 50-yard line. It's going to be just short of the 50-yard line. Not first down territory for the Decatur Red Raiders. It's going to be it's going to be fourth down and five. Yeah, maybe we can get them to come jump off sides or something and get that first down. But, yeah, Ellis, I think he thought he could get it. and mm, They're too fast. Yeah, they, were, they, they kind of closed the gap pretty quick. Going to be fourth down and five. Mack Hillis in to kick for Decatur. Trey Ellis is the long snapper. Decatur has a tight formation for the punt. And we have a flag on the play. Do we have too many men on the field for Gardendale? Once again, the officials are counting. It is. It is illegal participation against the Gardendale Rockets. It's going to be a five-yard penalty. It's going to be right at the sticks. First down for the Decatur Red Raiders. Oh, Max is down there cheering. For that play, <laughs> yeah. well, that's a self-inflicted wound right there by Gardendale, and you know if we can get some breaks like that, that's what uh, it's going to take for us in the second that, half, yeah, right? That, that's that's what we need. That's what we need. Huge break for the Decatur Red Raiders. The ball is marched all the way into Gardendale territory. The ball is spotted at the far hash mark at the Gardendale forty-six yard line. One receiver far side, two receivers near side. Ellis takes the snap, hands off to Ryan. Right, Ryan breaks across the floor, up to the 40, up past the 35 to the 30, hey, almost to the 25-yard line. Huge pickup for the Decatur Red Raiders. Yeah, nice job by Ryan Kirk to find the hole. He was patient and cut it up and uh, was able to get past that second line of scrimmage and that defensive uh, linebacker side. Nice job by Ryan Kirk. 9.06 remaining in the third quarter. Gardendale leads by a score of 10 to 7. The ball is spotted at the 26 yard line, far hash mark. Two receivers near side, single receiver far side. Ryan Kirk standing to the right of Ellis. Ellis hands him the ball. Ryan's going to come over to the left side, pushing through some Gardendale Rockets. Going to get up close to the 22 yard line. 
Going to pick up about four or five yards on the play, bringing up second down. Yeah, and that uh, Ryan Kirk gets up uh, limping a little bit with that uh, that high ankle sprain that he's had, and looks like he's aggravated it again. Dayton Swopes comes in for him. Two receivers near side, two receivers far side, spread formation. Ellis fakes the hand clap. He's going to bring Dayton standing back behind him to the left, moves Braden Duper to the wing on the right. Takes the snap, hands the ball off. No, he's going to follow Trey, uh, or Dayton up the middle, trying to pick up what he can, almost a bobbled uh, handoff. He's going to pick up very few yards on the play, maybe a yard. He's going to bring up third down and maybe four. I think Ellis was hopeful that Swopes is going to take that ball. Well, yeah, it's uh, you know that's that read option, and he, he could uh, pull it and run it himself. I doubt that Ellis would have pulled it and tried to run up the middle, but – He's still like he's uh, shaking that hand a little bit. Third down and five. Ball spotted at the 21. Decatur needs the 16-yard line. Dayton takes the ball. He's running up the middle, getting up close to first I down yard. he's yardage. got it. It's going to be very, very close. Yeah, I think he's got it. No, he's going to be a yard short. It's going to bring up fourth down and one with 736 remaining in the third quarter. Gardendale leads by a score of 10 to 7. Decatur is faced with a fourth down and one situation. And they're trotting on the field goal team. Yeah. Adolfo Soto coming on and going to try it. It's going to be a, what, a 29-yard field goal? It's going to be a 25, 34-yard field goal yeah. attempt. And we have a timeout, Gardendale. All right, let me write this down real quick. All right, timeout for Gardendale with, uh, at 719 in the third quarter. All right, so it's going to be fourth down and one for Decatur. Uh, the ball is spotted at the 17-yard line. The ball is lying near the middle of the field. It will be a straight-on kick for, for Toto there. Huge, huge opportunity for the Decatur Red Raiders here to tie up the ball game. You got some of your former students uh, watching the uh, YouTube feed tonight. Coach Belufsky. Who's that? That's Hudson and his crew. Oh, are they watching? They're, they're out at the farm at uh, out in Town Creek and uh, watching. Here's their view. They're on the four wheelers and they just <laughs> watch it on their phone. So they wanted you to know they're watching. Well, so. I appreciate you guys. All right. All right, the Decatur Red Raiders in. Trey Ayers with the long snap. Ellis is going to hold it. Toto is in for the kick. The ball is going to be and, spotted at the 24. And the we're off sides. Kick. Good thing because it, I don't know if it was good. Uh, uh, Toto went ahead with the, through with the kick. It, we have an illegal procedure uh, against the Decatur Red Raiders. Man, I think so, that's going to bring the offense back on I the field. I don't know. He, he was making 40 yarders in, in pregame, so. And we got a little win with us, so no. Nope, here comes the offense. The offense is coming back on the field. I, I... There is a little bit of a breeze flowing through the stadium. It's going from north to south. It's almost almost blowing to the southeast. So uh, it's a little bit of a breeze in Toto's face. So Coach Adcock has elected to go ahead and put the offense back on the field. Seven nineteen remaining in the third quarter. The Decatur uh, trails by score of seven to ten to Gardendale. Ellis has Ryan Kirk standing behind him, takes the snap, looking to throw, looks to the right, now l- runs over here to his left, throws the ball. And it's got to be a pass interference call against, and there's oh, no flag. Man. The Gardendale Rocket jumped over his back, and there's no call on the play. It's going to be first down for the Rockets at the 22-yard line. Oh, wow. That was close. Mm, but they're, not, was not. they're not going to get it. They're not going to get it. Yeah, they're not going to get it, but he was definitely there early. Wow. Coach Adcock, give him yeah. an earful down there. Absolutely. Well, unfortunate set of uh, events there for the Decatur Red Raiders. It's going to be Burndale's ball at their own 22-yard line. Nelson? In at quarterback still, Harris standing to his left, gives the ball to Harris. He's going to come over here to the Decatur sideline, and he's going to fall down. Oh, he's going to be brought down by a host of Decatur Red Raiders, lost on the play, all the way back to the 19-yard line. He's going to bring up second long. Well, it goes under seven minutes in the third quarter. We're down 10-7, to seven, but uh, defense playing inspired on that first down, a loss of uh, – 
four or five yards. 6.45 remaining in the third quarter. Uh, Gardendale leads to get by a score 10 to 7. Nelson in at quarterback, empty backfield, has a mm, looks like two receivers to the left side, a very, very tight spread formation. Looking to throw the ball deep. Now he's going to roll out to his right, and he's going to be yeah. down. down. It's a sack for Decatur. Huge play for the Decatur Red Raiders. A sack all the way back to the 11-yard line. Paxton Duper on the on the sack right there. Big, big, huge play. Well, if Paxton Duper doesn't uh, tackle him, shoestring tackle, I'm not so sure he might still be running. But uh, nice job by Paxton Duper. Now third and 20, at least 20. Don't let anybody behind you. Nelson. Takes the snap, looking to throw the ball deep. He's under pressure. Yeah. Right. He's going to oh. avoid a Decatur defender in his own end zone, but Decatur's going to make the tackle at the 10-yard line, back-to-back sacks for the Decatur defense. Mylon Miller and a host of Decatur defenders on the tackle there on the sack. Man, I, I got to feel, I feel like a little momentum coming our way. For the listeners at home, we were that close from getting him in the end zone but he was able to push off one of the Decatur defenders and get out of the end zone. Regardless, he made it all the way out to the nine-yard line, and then now it's a punt time for Gardendale. Good snap, good kick, all the way back to the 47-yard line. But Webster good makes job, a fair Hutch. catch. And with 5-14 remaining in the third quarter, your score remains Gardendale 10, Decatur 7. Well, that's the way to do it on defense, guys. Well, it's it's almost like uh, Gardendale really not playing that inspired of football right now. And, you know, let's see if Decatur can take advantage of that. You know, the, of course, the, the, the offense didn't look good by Gardendale, but the defense has been looking pretty good. Decatur has the ball at their own 47 yard or at Gardendale's 47 yard line near hash mark. Ellis has two receivers far side, single receiver near side. Ryan takes the snap. He goes across to the right side, gets in, to, inside the 45-yard line of Gardendale. Good pickup on first down, giving five yards. Ryan Kirk did a good job stretching that ball out and just picking up the yards that he was given. And, uh, hey, anytime you get four to five yards on first down, that's good where, that's where we job. need to be. Jaden Brown is the single receiver on the far side. This side, Decatur has two receivers. Got Ryan Kirk standing to his left, Ellis does, looking across the formation, and now he's wanting to move something. He sees something, and he's yelling at his H-back. Duper lets him know to who to block. He keeps the ball, goes across the 40-yard line. Ellis is all the way inside the 30. Give him the 29-yard line. First down for the Decatur Red Raiders. Yeah, he didn't think twice about that. He knew what what he was going to do in that quarterback draw. He saw that uh, seam in the defense, and uh, he took it. Give him the 28-yard line. The ball is lined up at the far hash mark. Ryan Kirk now moving back behind Ellis. Ellis has two receivers near side, single receiver far side. Fakes the handoff, throws the ball to Jack Waller and off his hands, incomplete pass. He was wide open as he crossed the, as he ran a uh, basically a little uh, slant across the middle. Wasn't able to pull it in, bringing up the second down. Yeah, that's that play that we've run before, scored on before, and looked like mm, he was Waller okay. had, a, had a little step on his man, but the ball just a little bit out front of him. Decatur has Gardendale's defense sitting back on their heels just a little bit. 413 remaining in the third quarter. Gardendale leads 10 to 7. Ellis takes a snap. He's going to run over here to the left side, looking to throw the ball, makes the connection out here. Looks like to Jiren McDaniel. Jiren makes his way inside the 25 yard line, up close to the 22 yard line. It's going to bring up third down and four for the Red Raiders. Big third down. Jiren McDaniel just in the flat. It was, uh, we were hoping to break a tackle, but nice job by the defensive back to sling him down four or five yard game. Decatur coaches probably thinking we got two downs to get a first down here. Gardendale lining up with their 30 formation with their three down linemen. Looks like they're wanting to show pressure here. Ellis takes the snap, looks the ball, throws it to Jaden Brown in the end zone, and it's going to be an incomplete pass against us earlier when we had leg entanglement. Ah. They're going to say, oh, he's going to get a penalty because he's talking to the official. Well, he, he was double teamed there, and they, you know, but he was going to be wide open, but there was One of their leg. defenders hit, hit. I don't know if it was incidental contact it was or incidental what. Incidental leg intertwinement. We were called for it but we, earlier in the game, but Gardendale was not. 15-yard penalty That's against the can. Red Raiders for unsportsmanlike conduct. 
huge penalty against the Decatur Red Raiders. That's going to march the ball all the way back close to the 40-yard line. Oh, they get to keep, and they won't get to keep the down, will they? No, it's, it's going a to dead, be a dead it's ball. It's a dead ball foul. So, mm. got to got to keep your keep your cool, and it's going to be. Is it fourth down? It yeah, is it is fourth, fourth down. down. It's yeah. fourth down. I think we got to punt the ball. Yeah, like you got to punt it. It's going to be fourth down for the Decatur Red Raiders. The penalty marches the ball all the way back to the thirty-eight yard line. It's going to be. Uh, let's see, what is that? It's about as about fourth and 25. No way you could even entertain the thought of trying to go for it here. They don't Decatur. have anybody back. Well, back deep for Decatur. Mac Hillis takes the snap. Kick oh, is away. Man. Goes straight up. It's going to bounce around the 22-yard line, inside the 20, down to the 19-yard line, where it will be touched down there by Trey Ayers. Oh, there, there was, was no pressure there. on the defense coming into the block. They had plenty of time to get that one away. Do we have a penalty? I don't know. Everybody's kind of looking around. Sideline warning on against Decatur, Decatur. Against okay. Decatur. So, with 319 remaining in the third quarter, Gardendale leads 10 to 70. Uh, Gardendale will have the ball at their own 20-yard line near hash mark, marching left to right as you listen. Man, those are just two opportunities right there where we get deep in their end zone and don't come away with points. Ball spotted at the 20, 19, 19, 20 yard line. Nelson takes the snap, looking to run the ball up the middle, has a hole. It's crossed the 25, up oh to the God. 20, up to the 40. It's a foot race. He's going to be gathered in by uh, Matthews, pushed out of bounds, indicator territory at the 40 yard line. Set of unfortunate events. Gosh. Uh, Nelson takes the ball. It was nothing more than a, uh, than a quarterback keeper up the middle and picks up huge yardage all the way into. Decatur territory. Well, here we go. Defense got to uh, come up with another style, but you're just thinking that it's just a matter of time before he gets uh, gets going out. This time he's going to hand off to Harris. Harris is going to break across the 40-yard line, gets up to the maybe the 39-yard line. It's going to bring up second down for the Rockets there. You know, that quarterback just seems so effortless when, he, when he's out there making that play, and he's not – in the initial part of the play, he's not that good, but he hits the hole real quick, and then he can get out on you quick. 2.45 remaining in the third quarter. Gardendale leads by a score of 10 to 7. Second down and seven for the Rockets. The ball spotted at Decatur's 39 yard line near, near hash mark. We got Bunch right here. Nelson takes the snap, once again looking to run, has a hole. He's across the 30, up to the 20, across the Decatur 15. He's going to run inside the 10, up to the 5, touchdown. Touchdown for Gardendale on a quarterback keeper. He just does a good job of making defenders oh, miss. Oh, yeah, he just he took over right there. He said, I'm just, I'm just going to quit hand, handing it off. I'm just going to take it myself and uh, – Decatur just couldn't catch up with him. But, uh, yeah, you just – you go back and you think the momentum we had them, mm-hmm. and then they just escape back out. So, back up to a two scores. Kyle Norris in for the extra point. It is up and good. Your new score with two minutes and 18 seconds remaining in the third quarter. Gardendale 17, Decatur 7. Very important offensive series coming up. We've got a – Put together a drive, and we've done that the past two drives, and it just stalls. You know, that's just it's, – it's just – the thing about this is is that we needed to, to, to get Gardendale down, and we, we had them down offensively and defensively. We put a couple of scores on them, no telling what's going to happen, but without, with, without taking advantage of those opportunities, and then all of a sudden two or three plays, they're in the end zone – and uh, all that work we did for naught, really. So now it's up to Decatur's offense to come up and try to get something going, and uh, hopefully it doesn't waken up this defense to where it, it starts to play like it did in the first quarter. Norris puts the ball into play. End over end kick going to come down around the three-yard line, taken in there by Jaron McDaniels up to the 10. 15-yard line, across the 20, out to the 25, a little bit of open room, up to the 40-yard line and close to the 46. Good return for number 22 for the Decatur Red Raiders, Jiren McDaniel. 
It's going to be first down for the Decatur Red Raiders at their own 47-yard line. Well, guys, that's exactly what we needed, and I've, I've said it the last two kickoff returns. I've seen a crease there, and it looked Jiren did a good job of going against the grain, getting back up, Cutting running back north and south. It. Yeah, right. yeah, did a nice job. See if this offense can come up and take advantage of this good field position. All right, Decatur has Jaden Brown out to the right side. Two receivers near side and Waller and Belcher. Ellis takes the snap, hands off to Ryan. Ryan pushes across the right side, close to the 50-yard line, probably just an inch short of it where it's going to be second down. You know, the time goes in there under two minutes in the third quarter, and, uh, you know, you, you start thinking you're, you're running out. We're going to be running out of possessions. we got to really, really make something happen on this one right here. Hooper exits the field, but Webster goes on to the field. Empty backfield for Decatur. Ellis takes the snap. He's going to roll to his left, looking to throw the ball, and he hits Belcher in the hands, and it goes to the ground incomplete. Bo Belcher, it hit him right in the hands, but he wasn't able to pull it in. He well, picked that, up first down Yeah, yards. that would have been an easy first down, and uh, now it brings up third down and seven, and got to make this uh, – you know, if you don't convert on this, you're going to be punting the ball back to Gardendale. Ball is spotted on the far hash mark on the 50-yard uh, yard line. Third down and seven for the Decatur Red Raiders. Ellis takes the snap. He's going to have to break over to the right side, throws the ball, trying to make a connection. But it's got going it. to be a completion for a first down. The ball is caught at the 40-yard line. Was that Brown once again? Jaden Brown. Yep, Jaden Brown makes a great catch on the sideline. For the Decatur first down. Yeah, Ellis did a nice job of threading the needle that time to get his wide receiver right there on the uh, right there on the out of bounds mark. Ball spotted at the uh, Gardendale forty yard line. Ellis takes the snap, throws the ball. This time, trying to hit Jack once again on the slant, hits Jack, but the Gardendale defender hits him at the same time yeah, the ball comes around and it falls to the ground. We're, we're hitting wide receivers in the hands, and we got to catch it. We just got to catch it. Well, he's in traffic there, you know, and you know he he knows he's about to get hit, and the guy's been there a little early a couple times. So 118 remaining in the third quarter. Gardendale leads 17 to 7. Ellis takes the snap, gives the ball to Ryan. Ryan breaks across the 40 yard line up to the 43 yard line, where it's going to bring up a third down and long for the yeah, Red Raiders. Third down long. We need a wide receiver to uh to step up to the plate and uh, catch a ball. Put Webster in for Braden Duper. For those of you that are curious, right now, Gardendale is, they are double teaming Jaden Brown, even with a broken hand uh, over on the right side. He's got a man on top of him and over the, and on him and over the top of Here him. Every play. Ellis takes the snap under heavy pressure, hits Hutt. Hutt across the middle. Hutt picks up the first down up to the 25, up to the 20. First down for the 20, for the Red Raiders. Well, that's exactly what happens when you got two and maybe even a third guy shading over to Jaden Brown. It leaves the middle of the field open. Hutt did a good job finding space. Ellis did a good job we, of getting we, the ball. To we him. did a good job picking up the blitz because uh, Putt Webster was right where that uh, linebacker should have been, and uh, Decatur moves the chain. 27 seconds remaining in the third quarter. Ellis has a single receiver and Jaden Brown to the right, two receivers near side. He's got Ryan Kirk to the left. Now he's going to push him over to the right side. He's making a check at the line. Duper is the wing over to the left. Takes the snap. Hand off to Ryan. He's going up the middle. Pushes across the 15-yard line. Good pickup on first down, bringing up second down and five. You know, that was an audible at the line. I don't know exactly what Ellis was seeing, but uh, uh, nonetheless, Good good first down pickup uh, makes it uh, second and five. The end of the third quarter with your score, Gardendale leading Decatur by a score of 17 to 7. Decatur with the ball at the 15-yard line, driving towards the uh, what will be now the south end zone and what almost feels like a must-score drive for the Red Raiders. Oh, without a doubt, it's a must-score drive. I'm, I'm not so sure how many times we're going to get the ball back, but even – Coming away with three and cutting it to a, a single score is, is um, you know, what we need to do. We, you do still have the option to, to kick because uh, it's a 10-score game. So you can kick or go for a touchdown. But let's talk about our fourth quarter sponsor, Red Beard Solution. Can you hear me now? I can hear you. Having issues hearing other Jeepers out on the trail, call the folks over at Red Beard Solutions. They're experts at two-way communications and can get you talking again. 
Contact us by phone at 256-355-4747. Email at info at redbeard.solutions. 1222 4th Avenue, Southeast Decatur, Alabama. 35601. Go Red Raiders. Well, we made it to the fourth quarter. 12, 12 minutes on the, on the clock, and, and if we could get the, somehow get the ball in from the 15, second down and six from the 15, if we could just get it in, that, I think that puts pressure back on the Gardendale Rockets. And uh, Well, and we've done exactly what you said we needed to do to keep it close, right? Right. Score right here, put a little bit more pressure on them. All right, as – we begin fourth quarter play. Decatur will have the ball at the Gardendale 15-yard line, marching from left to right as you listen. It will be a second down and five-and-a-half play for the Decatur Red Raiders. Decatur has two receivers far side, single receiver near side, and Jaden Brown. Put Webster and Belcher over to the left. Quick throw across the middle, incomplete oh, pass. Oh, my to goodness. It's going to fall to the ground. It was a low throw, but he it was, was a catchable open. throw, but it – it was a it was a hard one to bring in. It's going to bring up through that third down and five. That seems like that play's been there all night. We just can't catch the ball and and he uh, just let him Ellis led putt a little bit too much and uh, putt couldn't come down with it. Well, it's third third down and five and a half for the Red Raiders. Pick up five and a half here. Continue the drive. If not, it will be a house call. It's going to be Toto coming in for the kick. Ellis takes the snap under heavy pressure immediately. Throws the ball over here to the sideline. It was intercepted by Gardendale, but he's out of bounds. He did not get a foot down. And another down for the Decatur Red Raiders. So, with 11.50 remaining in the third quarter, Gardendale leaks 17-7. Toto trots in for what appears to be a field goal attempt for the Red Raiders. Yeah, it looks like about 32 yards, but... Uh... The ball is spotted in the middle of the field. It will be a straight kick for Toto. Airs in for the snap. Ellis for the – it was a low snap. He brought it in. Wow. He put it down, it. and I think it's going to leak off to the left. Yeah, it's going to be – the kick is no good. The snap was low. Ellis had trouble bringing it in, getting it down. The kick was away, but he pulled it to the left. And, uh, unfortunately for our Red Raiders, no points once again on the third drive that we get in – Side the 20 yard line. I think we're going to look back if, if we don't win this game. We're going to look back at the opportunities that we've had and uh, not able to come up with it now. Defense has really got to be tuned tuned in where number five is because, you know, another, uh, another score of any kind by Gardendale really makes it extremely difficult for us to come back. Nelson takes the snap, hands it off to Harris, coming over here to the left side. Woo! He dropped in the backfield. Duper, 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 like a shot, takes him down around the 17-yard line. Loss of two, three on the play, bringing up second down. I'm not uh, playing. I'm not saying I need to be a, a, a Gardendale coach, but I think I'd let number five run it. <laughs> That's what I think. Let the yeah. quarterback just get back there and run. And Nelson has two receivers near side, single receiver far side. Motion now from one of the receivers over to the right side. Nelson takes the snap, instant uh, flag on the play. I, think I don't think Soto came across, so it must have been a flag be was, going on the offense. Flag was against the referee, and usually that's where you get your offensive penalties. Dead ball, illegal procedure against the offense. That so, has to be like eight tonight. Once again, Gardendale is going to lose yardage on the play, backing them up to the 16, no, 10 yard, no, 11 yard line, where it's going to bring up second down and 18 for Gardendale. Nelson takes the snap, looking to run the ball up the middle, has a hole. Nope, he's going to be gra grabbed around the 17 yard line, picks up about half of the penalty yardage going to bring up third down and 12 for the Rockets. Even Not trying to even trying to, to tackle him, that dude's greasy. Yeah, man. man. I think the coaches heard you, John, because uh, they kept the uh, quarterback keeper right there. Third down and 12 for the Rockets. The ball spotted at the 17-yard line Here we go. for Gardendale. Tight formation. Nelson takes the snap, looking to throw deep, 
and he's going to overshoot all of his receivers. Number 81 he was trying to hit, Carter Jenkins, but that throw was about 10 yards over his head, bringing up fourth down for Gardendale. The quarterback is way more effective running than he is passing. He he threw a dart right there. He's got to put a little bit more air under that right. to give his receiver a chance to adjust to the ball. And Fourth down and 12 for the Rockets. Punt team is on for Gardendale. Norris takes the snap, kick is away, a little bit of pressure from Decatur. Putt is not going to make the catch at the 44-yard line, jumps away from it. It crawls close to the 50-yard line where it's going to be touched down there by a Gardendale rocket. It will be first down and 10 for the Decatur Red Raiders. The ball will be spotted at, spotted at the Gardendale 49-yard line. 10 minutes and 12 seconds remaining in the fourth quarter. Gardendale leads by a score of 17-7. to Sorry, John. No, we've had some really good starting positions this half. I mean, I don't think we've been backed up at all and uh, just not been able to take care of it if we do just let's let's just let's let's score let's score ellis pistol formation has kirk standing behind him two receivers to the far side single receiver near side hands it off mm. to ryan and ryan is smacked right in the backfield that's number absolutely 11 absolutely nobody nowhere to run for ryan it's going to be a loss of three on the play all the way back into decatur territory Second down and 13 for the Red Raiders. Looks like Fight was uh, knocking himself on the head, and maybe he let the guy go by, but he came in free and knocked him down for a three-yard line. Ellis takes the snap, fakes the handoff, looking to run to his left, wants to throw it, does throw it. This time the connection is made to Duke. He's across the 40-yard line up to the 35-yard line of Gardendale. First down for the Decatur Red Raiders. Good job of Ellis rolling out to his left, and Kevin Duke came across the middle, and great hands by Kevin Duke there. Yeah, nice and a nice throw. It wasn't uh, too hard or too soft, but uh, let his wide receiver go up and catch it with his hands. Ball spotted at the 32-yard line of Gardendale. Ellis takes the snap, looking to throw the ball. Instant heat up the middle, sidesteps one of the rushers, wants to throw the ball, and it's going to go out of bounds. Incomplete pass for the Decatur Red Raiders, bringing up second down. He intended pass for Jack Waller on the sideline there. It just evaded him. Well, it was, I, I think Ellis, it was, it, I could, I don't think he, he, had a little he bit couldn't too decide much whether he was yeah. going to throw it out of bounds or throw it to a wide receiver on the corner, but just missed. Nine twenty-one remaining in the fourth quarter. Gardendale leads by a score of 17 to seven. Ellis takes the snap, hands the ball off to Kirk. Kirk's going off to the left side. And once again, there's nothing there. The Gardendale uh, defenders let him go and he has to back up all the way inside the 35 yard line where he's going to go down. It's going to be a huge loss for the Decatur Red Raiders all the way back to their 37 yard line, third and long. Good Man, job. We got it. We got to get something that we can get at least Toto a, tr a chance at a, at a field goal. Unfortunately, here the first down, we need the 22-yard line, and that's close to where Toto's range begins. Ellis takes the snap, looks to throw. He's going to be sacked. No. Oh, no, he's going to break away from the defender, rolls out to his left side, and makes a connection at the 32-yard line. Call it the 31-yard line, nowhere close to first down. You got to go for it. Yeah, it's going to be fourth down and nine for the Decatur, uh, for the Decatur Red Raiders. Yeah, yeah. You, you know, you picked up something in Duke. First of all, Ellis Dickman just getting away from a, a sack. Yeah, I mean, just making that happen single-handedly. Play clock is at 20. Coach McCravey signaling in the play call. Fourth down and nine, a must pick up for the Red Raiders. Season on the line. Ellis takes the snap. Heat off of the left side. He's going to have to now reverse his field. Coming over here to the right side. Looking for somebody downfield. There's nobody open, and he's going to be sacked going to be sacked at the 45 yard line That's a throw. yeah he did unleash he did try to unload the ball to ryan kirk ball falls to the ground it's an incomplete pass it will be first down for gardendale at the decatur 32 yard line you know it, the efforts there guys i mean I, I don't know what to say you know ellis is giving his heart out and um He's putting it on the line. Well, 7.54 left in the ball game, and Gardendale takes over first and 10, and this is where Decatur's defense really needs a three and out, really needs something to happen. and Because uh, we're not going to get the ball too many more times, and you're down 17-7. to seven. Yeah, I don't think they're going to put it in the air. They're going to try to keep 
keep the clock running. 7.54 remaining in the ball game. Gardendale leads by a score of 17-7. to Nelson in at quarterback, tight formation, bunch left. Fakes the pitch over here to the left side, breaks across the right side, picking up good yardage as he moves inside the 35 up to the 40-yard line. Not quite first down yardage, but a good pickup nonetheless. It's going to be second down for the Rockets there. Yeah, that's, uh, that's not what we want. It's uh, nine yards on first down and uh, actually nine and a half. I don't know, about a half yard to, to make the first down. Maybe we get a offside penalty or something, but we got to get the ball back somehow. Gardendale has a new quarterback in the ball game. Right now in at quarterback is number 18, McLean Beeson. McLean Beeson ha hands the ball off to his running back, Looks like it's going to be first down yardage, but I was wondering if something had happened to Tyler Nelson, their their quarterback, but he makes his way back out onto the field now. It's going to be first down for Gardendale. The ball is spotted at their own 42-yard line. 7-16 remaining in the ball, ball game. Gardendale leads by a score of 17-7. Nelson with Harris standing to his right, takes the snap, Pitches out to Harris, out to the right side, tries to stay in bounds. He does stay in bounds, picks up about five yards, maybe six on the play. It's going to bring up second down. The running back did a good job hanging on right there. The quarterback, when he pitched it, pitched it a little behind the, the running back and uh, lucky to come down with that one. Second down and three for Gardendale. The ball is at the 49-yard line of Gardendale. Not quite to the midfield stripe just yet. Nelson is in no hurry now. 18 seconds still remaining on the play clock. Going to have motion from the right side to the left side. And now he's going to send the man in motion back to the right side. Six seconds remaining on the play clock. Three, two, one. Timeout, Gardendale. Interesting. Hmm. All right, so uh, 614 remaining in the ball game. Gardendale leads Decatur by a score of 17 to 7, and Gardendale elects to take a timeout with a second and three play coming up. Yeah, that was interesting. I'm, I'm, I'm wondering if he's nicked up a little bit and it's giving us a chance to regroup on defense. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. Kind of got him. Well, on our heels and, I, I, you know, I think right now is that we're probably trying to overplay it a little bit, maybe trying to reach in for a ball and, and, and not bringing the tackle down. And, uh, you know, they've had a couple of a really good first down plays and, and so second and short. And, you know, it's just, it, every time uh, you make a first down, you're, you're burning more clock at 614 left in the ball game and you're down two scores and you got to really – you got to make a stop, and they're about to go in our our uh, side of the 50-yard line. Second down and three for Gardendale. The ball is spotted on the far hash mark at the uh, their own 49-yard line. Nelson is back. Oh, no, 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 my goodness. Yes. Offside. Offside. No, it's not offside. Illegal, illegal procedure. procedure again. A procedural penalty against the Gardendale Rockets will back them up another five yards and probably what will be their eighth procedural penalty on the night going to bring up a second down and eight for Gardendale. Ball's pushed all the way back to their own 44-yard line. Break for the Red Raiders. Need to stop them here. Nelson hands off to Harris. Running up the middle. Picks up the penalty yardage up close to the 50-yard line. Give him the 50-yard line where it's going to be third down and two for the Rockets. Yeah, the clock goes under five minutes. Six or minutes. Six minutes and uh, – Big this play is, right here. Yeah, this is uh, this is could be ball game right here. Could be the season right here for the Red Raiders. Nelson has a single receiver far side, near side. Harris standing to his right, trying to draw Decatur offside. Decatur doesn't budge. Third down and two for the Rockets. They must get to the Decatur 48-yard line for the first down. Snap, hand off to Harris, first and he down. gets the first down yardage mm -hmm. as he pushes close to the Decatur 45-yard line, up oh, close man, to the 46-yard line. It will be a huge first down for Gardendale at the 46-yard line. Yeah, running out of time, and uh, you have to give Gardendale a lot of credit. They uh, they just do enough to get the first down. See if we can stop it on first down, maybe limit them from uh, a big first down play. Last two series or two, two uh, first downs, they've made big yardage. 
First down and 10 for Gardendale. The ball is spotted at the Decatur 46-yard line. In no hurry, 10 seconds remaining on the play clock. Nelson takes the snap, and he's looking at the throw. Throw it into a Red Raiders' hands. He's going to be pressured from the right side, looking to throw the ball deep. Has a man all the way downfield at the 10-yard line. The reception is made. Number 12 for Gardendale. Snuck in behind the Decatur defense. Aiden Cups made the catch at the 10-yard line, and he uh, – Got in behind Z.J. Matthews for the huge pickup on the play. Gardendale looking to stick the dagger in the hearts of the Red Raiders here. Just a little surprise that Gardendale's putting it up in the air because that stops the clock. But I guess they saw something we didn't. And uh... Well, I think, you're, you know, you can get back there. If it's not there, the number five takes off running. And uh, he just threw a, threw a dart. We just let a guy run free behind us, couldn't catch back up to him. And. Got to hold him to a field goal here. Ball is at the eight-yard line. Harris takes the snap, breaks across the five-yard line up to the four-yard line. 425 remaining in the ball game. Gardendale leads Decatur by a score of 17 to 7 with the ball inside Decatur's five-yard line. Man, we got our hands on our hips, but you know, these guys are gonna play to the, the very end. So, like I said, it's very important. Keep them out of the end zone. 408 remaining in the ball game. Two receivers far side for Gardendale. Nelson has Harris standing to his right. Hands the ball off to him. Nope, he's going to keep it. Breaks over to the right side, and he's going to be just short of the end zone. He might be at the one or just inside the one-yard line where it's going to bring up a third down play for Gardendale with 345 remaining in the ball game. Yeah, he's uh, what are they showing him down inside the one-yard line, so – we got to get some push right here. Gardendale leads Decatur by 17-7 to here. If they score a touchdown, it will be a nail in the coffin for uh, the Red Raiders. Got to keep them out of the end zone here. Nelson takes the snap, rolls out to the right, breaks the tackle, and is into the end zone for the touchdown. Z.J. Matthews came across left end and uh, had had a shot at getting him down in the backfield, but he just missed. Yeah, just good. It, it looked like he had him, and he just kind of slid right off of him. Norris in for the extra point for the Rockets. Good snap. Kick is away. And the kick is good. So with 3.15 remaining in the fourth quarter, Garden Tail takes a huge lead against the Decatur Red Raiders, 24-7. to seven. Well, you know, we've had – Had opportunities. Yeah, man. we've had four, four different mm-hmm. drives. We get it down, you know, well within 30-yard 30, 30 line going in, and it just stalls out every time. You have to give Garden Tail a lot of credit. And uh, and then, you know, we've – We've had some. We've dropped some balls and, and, and kind of right in our hands, and and not being able to pull them in. And, and it looked like when we have the momentum, we just couldn't come up with the with the play that you know we that would just turn the corner. And uh, it's just the way it is. Let's I think it's setting in for some of these seniors that they're playing careers. Yeah, I know some of these guys going on to college, but. Uh, this may be the end of the road for some of these guys. Norris back deep, ready to put the ball into play. Kick is on the way, brought in by – who was that? Fax Kevin back Duke. Run, is that Duke at the goal line? Brings it out to the 20-yard line, past the 20-yard line, maybe up to the 22-yard line where it will be first down and 10 for the Decatur Red Raiders. You got to feel for them, and we we've all been there, guys, and they played their heart out. Well, there's no doubt. There is absolutely no doubt that Decatur played and uh, played uh, played their hearts out here tonight. They uh, the effort was there. The results that we wanted may not be there, but you know you want to leave it all on the field when it's over with. Well, I think right now, just hang on to the ball. Oh, that's not exactly what we did. Pass want to is do. intercepted by Gardendale, and it's going to be returned to the end zone for a touchdown. Mm. Touchdown for the Gardendale Rockets. Pass was tipped into the air by Ellis, and the Gardendale Rockets zero. Brian Gilmore 
picked it off with his back to his end with to the end zone, turned around, sprinted to the right sideline into the end zone for the touchdown. Gardendale takes a 30 to seven lead. Yeah, that's one of the things that I, I was trying to get out of my mouth. Let's don't, don't uh, do something that gives him another touchdown because now it's 30 to seven, about to be 31 to seven and not definitely indicative of, of how the game, how close the game was, but you know, the two touchdowns in a matter of a few seconds and, uh, at, uh, at Norris's extra point is up and good, making the score thirty-one to seven. Gardendale. Two fifty-eight remaining in the ball game. Decatur trails Gardendale thirty-one to seven. Definitely settling in now with some of the players on the sideline. Many many of the players are consoling one another. And uh, when people down in Birmingham read the uh, read the score, they're going to see a thirty-one to seven outcome. But the uh, Gardendale folks, uh, if they you know tell folks you know exactly what went on at the ball game, ball game tonight, they will tell them that they had a uh, they had a Donny Brook here with Decatur as Decatur put up a fight and put up 14 points of window dressing at the end of the game to make the league 31 to seven, but they will know that they had a ball game as they travel back home tonight. Norris kicks the ball. It's a low line drive kick. It will go into the end zone where it will be brought out to the 20 yard line. It will be first down and 10 for the Decatur Red Raiders at their own 20 yard line. Ball was caught by number 35, Devin Haley. Well, you know, a lot of a lot of things um, unfortunate in the second half. We had, like we said, we had our opportunities, but don't it, we get the ball up to twenty five? No, it's at twenty. Okay, that's college. Oh, Ellis taking the field. He's got trips to his left, single receiver to the right side. He's got Ryan standing to his right, looking to throw the ball, stepping up into the pocket, throws the ball out. Connection is made. At the 27-yard line, Jack Waller makes a great catch there as he taps his toes in the in the field to play. Great play, bringing up second down and three for the Red Raiders. Could have been a roughing the passer call right there. They put Ellis on the ground, but, the, you know, he gets right back up. and Ellis takes the snap, throws the ball out here to put Webster. First down yardage, ball is fumbled. Gardendale covers the ball at the Decatur 40-yard line. It's going to be first down for Gardendale at Decatur's 40-yard line. Unfortunate there for Putt. He made the catch, trying to get as much as he could out of the play, fumbled the ball, and it will be Gardendale's ball inside Decatur's territory once again at the 40-yard line. Yeah, we've been mistake-free until the last few minutes and uh, and two critical turnovers that uh, Decatur puts the ball on the ground this time. and. So Gardendale's got the new quarterback in. Number 18 back in at quarterback again for Gardendale. Number 18 is McKaylin Beeson. Takes the snap, hands the ball off, sprinting up the middle is number six for Gardendale. That will be Jonathan Harris. Pick up all the way inside the 35-yard line of Decatur where it will be second down. Clock rolls inside of two minutes and 20 seconds remaining in the ball game. Gardendale leading by a score of 31 to 7. Yeah, I think right now it's just don't let them score again. <laughs> I mean, you know, the, the balloon has definitely deflated on the Decatur side, but, uh, you know, you just you have to play it out to the end. It looks like Gardendale is going to bleed the clock as much as they can. Beeson hands off to number three now. Number three for Gardendale is Kedrick Story. Story makes the ball, takes the ball up close to the 30 yard line, probably about the 31, not quite first down yardage for Gardendale. It's going to be third down and one. You know, you just replay this in, in your mind, and you, you would think, as well as Decatur played, that we'd have had more than seven points, but have to give Gardendale a lot of credit on that. They, uh, you know, they, they, they bent, but they didn't break. And I think that's the thing that uh, they're going to take away from this. 
70 seconds remain in the ball game. Beeson in at quarterback. Shotgun takes the snap, hands the ball off to Story. Story breaks up the middle on the Red Raiders, up inside the 20-yard line to the 15-yard line. Now they can just kneel on the ball. Getting up, celebrating his good pickup, all his story for the Rockets. It's going to be inside the Decatur red zone, close to the 14-yard line. The clock now rolls under one minute. Gardendale can now take a knee and finish off the ball game. Number 28, Buell Lambert on the tackle there. He's a senior. Looks like they're getting all their senior guys in there to get one last play. Beeson takes the snap, hands off to Story. Once again, sidesteps a Red Raider, and he's going to go down this time at the – Oh, at the 14, 13-yard line, and that will be your ball game. The game clock rolls under 10 seconds in this great Decatur season. Once again, falling short in the second round of the playoffs by a score of 31-7, to and that's your ball game. Both coaches make their way out to midfield for the handshake. The soccer line lines up as both teams approach each other. Your final score was Gardendale 31, Decatur 7, which is not indicative at all of the ball game that we witnessed here. A lot of heart from the Decatur Red Raiders tonight, but they met their match with a good Gardendale team. Yeah, are you going to look back and, and you know, when you, when you have time and it's probably a lot of things that you could have, would have, should have done, and uh, you just didn't get it, get it, quite get it done on the uh, getting it in the end zone, but. A lot of emotions. Uh, like I said, we've all been there, and these guys, they, they fought their heart out tonight. Uh, the opportunities were there in the second half. I, if I had to – you know, you hate depending on one play, but uh, one of the more pivotal pl- plays I remember was uh, Jaden Brown going down and getting that 15-yard penalty when uh, yeah. when uh, he was double teamed out there. I'm tell you, I'll tell you something else, too. I'm, I'm looking down at the, at the field, and, and a lot of these Gardendale players or indicator players are hugging each other and yeah. uh, they, saying some things to them, not just your, your number, good game They're saying player. you played a heck of I, a yeah. game. Yeah. I saw what you saw. Number 69 for Gardendale just went up and hugged Tenarius Fennell and told him, hey, heck of a ball game, and the two had a moment there. A white jersey and a red jersey. Uh, uh, congratulating each other because they were they faced off against each other all night and always love to see good sportsmanship on both sides and Gardendale is showing that towards the Decatur Red Raiders right now. Well, we witnessed it last week when uh, when we were going off the field and looked down there at Fort Payne and you know just the angst of of you know knowing that your season's over with and and uh, so we get the same thing here tonight with. Uh, with Gardendale, but you know, you can't, you can't take anything away from Decatur season and just, you know, it's just so proud of these guys and really wanted them to, to uh, be victorious tonight, but just wasn't in the cards and uh, lost to a really good Gardendale team. And, you know, I could see Gardendale doing some uh, really nice things and, uh, you know, throughout the playoffs and they'll be playing next week and, we won't. And that's that's the that's the sad thing about it is I guess I, when you think about it, half of the teams that play in tonight are going to go home uh, and not play next weekend, and that's just the way it is. But you you got to be proud of these guys, proud of the coaching staff at the job that they've done, you know, all season long. Well, you, you talk about good sportsmanship. Uh, I tell you, number eleven for uh, Gardendale tonight played one heck of a game, and uh, he's on a sophomore, so they got. A lot to look forward to, but what I saw, uh, he and Ellis Dickman were hugging each other because uh, he was going up against Ellis all night, scrambling her way, and just really appreciative of of, uh, of that hard work. But uh, man, it's been a good year, guys. It's yeah. uh, you know you got 24, 24 seniors down there that they're probably crying their heart out uh, tonight, and uh, and you just got to give them a lot of credit for. For bringing the Red Raiders back to where we where we well, you know, are Coach, used to being, Coach so. Adcock talked about there were a couple of guys from last year's team that uh, Jacob McCray being one of them that really kind of 
he said put an impression on these uh those juniors at that last year which were the seniors of this year and uh you know i think that 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 leadership of the senior class this year no telling what it's going to do to the uh to the underclassmen on decatur's team but we're losing a whole, whole bunch of talent and uh we you know, can't go to the portal and reload like they do in college <laughs> can we no we can't do that and uh but it's uh you know, no. The, I, I know that these guys have been a really good uh, example for the for the younger Raiders coming up, and you know, and and you know, this was just a special group. And Coach Adcock talked about it. He's talked about it all year how special they were, and, and how special they are. And you know, he he goes back, and you know, he has two or three teams that he'll go back to and say, "Yeah, that one, that one, that one," and this is going to be one of those for 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 Coach Adcock that that are special in his heart. Is anybody still listening? Uh, 57, yeah. Oh, wow, 57. Well, for those of you that are still listening, if you're kind of wondering what's going on in the other playoff games around us right now, Hartzell is leading by uh, 10, I believe, late in their ball game, And uh, Muscle Shoals has beat Parker by a score of 31 to 6. So that wow. means Gardendale and Muscle Shoals will be playing next week. And, uh, Probably in Gardendale, I guess. Yeah, it'll yeah, be in Gardendale. Uh, that, uh, uh, that'll be a pretty good one to watch. So. Yeah, well, Post game sponsor BNB Roofing. How about give me uh, BNB Roofing? Oh, Michael Burnett. Oh, Michael. I got it. You got From it. Rubber roofs and new roofs to leak repairs and decking repairs. BNB Roofing is ready to serve you. You can rest assured that we will complete each project efficiently and correctly the first time. For excellent roofing services and gutters, call Michael Burnett at BNB Roofing today at 256-355-7826. BNB Roofing, a proud sponsor of Decatur High Football. Well, we couldn't couldn't do this without all the sponsors. Yeah, so, and uh, I, you know, and I, I think too, not not going through it, but Waterburger, Ben Doss Pharmacy, Alpha Agents, Brandy Hatfield, Eric Carver, the Rail Yard Restaurant. Mike Jones, Jones Financial, Riverbank and Trust, Stan Evans and Evans and, and Harris, CPA, Redbeard Solutions, and B&B Roofing. You know, we, we couldn't do this without them, and uh, I guess we could, but it's uh, it shows their support of Decatur Red Riders. And, you know, the pendulum has just has swung, it seems like, where the interest, the crowd was here tonight, the excitement was here. It's like uh, I go back to what David Elwell says, it's always better when Decatur's better. And so – well, and you have the community here. I mean, you, you, our half, halftime uh, interview with Coach Cagle talked about when he went to Madison Academy, you know, the mm-hmm. guys are from everywhere. And and uh, I think you saw that sense of community. I mean, you got guys that don't have kids in school now. They're they're still coming out to the game and uh, and supporting their, their community and their, their, their friends and people they go to church with. And uh, I'm just – I'm proud to be a Decatur Red Raider, and uh, I know that's what you end – yeah. every coaches uh, show with but uh it it makes me proud to to see the different generations of uh you, know, you, you put put a lot into this uh John and and Nick man I know uh you you prepare a ton for this show and uh, I know uh, we can come back up here next week and just <laughs> We hey, could. They're, they're looking for basketball guys to uh, uh, do yeah. basketball games huh? I think Joel Lamp could could pick that up uh, huh? somebody else can do that well, all right, guys. I appreciate it. Good, Brett. Good, nice to thank you, sir. Mm-hmm. Enjoyed you. it. Thank you for having me again. Well, I guess that's going to be an end, is it? That's you ready it. to wrap it that's up? A, that's that's it let's end? wrap it up. Good job, seniors, man. I can't can't be more proud of these guys. And, and we, uh, yeah, absolutely. And and when you see these boys, those of you that are still listening, tell them thank you. You know, because that you don't know the amount of work that goes into it. And, yeah, a lot of time. And, and, and tell these boys how much you appreciate the time and the effort, and, and and thank our sponsors also because once again next year we'll be doing this same thing, and we're going to be looking for sponsors. And remember, you know, these things are going to stay on YouTube forever, and you, your sponsorship, you know, these. Messages will they be might repeated take this over and over. Us. Well, who <laughs> well, knows? Hey, I, and I'll say hats off to our coaching staff this year. I mean, it, it really felt like they gelled. They've been together, you know, several years now. And Levi Terry on the defense. Uh, you had uh, McCravey on offense. You, course, All those young guys. Course, so, yeah. Well, here. And, and, and Ben. Ke- Kevin McCravey, Levi yeah. Terry, Kevin Lockhart, Ben Smith, Austin Duper. 
Chandler Allen, Caleb Finn, Josh Caldwell, Riley Adcock, Brian Watson, Patrick McAbee. You guys just do not know the hours that they spend up here. And lots of people think that, oh, it's the same amount of time that my player spends up there. No. The amount of time that goes into film study when they're up here doing laundry, cleaning the locker room, you guys have absolutely no idea how much time goes in and is spit by our coaching staff so that these guys can be successful. You got to do it. They do it because they love it. Right. They do it because they love it. (laughs) That's the reason why you coach. Absolutely. Well, all right. All right. Well, I guess we will sign off for now from Ogle stadium. One last time for the 2022 season, Decatur falls to the Gardendale Rockets in the second round of the playoffs by a score of 31 to seven. But ending on a positive note, Decatur ends this year with a nine and three record. Much thanks to our seniors. Much thanks to our wives who put up with us being away a lot for these Friday nights. Thank you, Michelle, Amy. Thank you to Brent's wife, Ashley. Ashley. Appreciate you. Thank you to everybody that has tuned in and has sent us greetings and good job and have even griped at us because we screw up the camera and don't say the score and the time enough. (laughs) But we really do appreciate it because we try to do the best that we do with what we've got. So from Ogle Stadium, one last time, we appreciate you. Thank you for the send-off, and everybody stay safe. We'll see you next season when the pigskin starts flying. Good night, everybody.